Bismillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm here in the Maktaba with a uh, beloved brother, very special guest, Ustad Ismail Beaumont. Ismail, alhamdulillah, I think I mean, we've known each other a while, you've taught at Medina College. Yes. Uh, before we begin, just give us a brief introduction of, about, of yourself. Yeah. Okay, uh, Ismail Beaumont, born uh, Christopher Beaumont on the 20th of August 1984. So, 30, 37 years old. I turned 37 the other day, actually, like about well, 10 we, days ago, yeah. 11 days ago. Um, you know, born into a Jamaican family. Um, my mind's gone blank. Yeah, so born, okay, so Christopher, mm -hmm. you accepted Islam. Oh, yeah, I accepted Islam when I was 19 years old. So, for the, you know, the first part of my life from being born to being to 19, I was raised in a Christian family. Yeah. Not saying that my family was particularly religious, but we did do the christenings and the, the Christmases and the birthdays and yeah. and stuff of this nature. And um, yeah, at the age of nineteen, tender age of nineteen, uh, I took that that leap of faith. Um, but that was as a result of being influenced by my father, yeah. who became a Muslim maybe ten years prior. Mashallah, and alhamdulillah. And also my uncle, Uncle Hamza. You know, you know Hamza. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hamza. They, those were the two instrumental figures in my life. That were, you know, um, you know, part and part responsible for me to be to yeah. accept Islam. So your dad became Muslim before you, yeah, and your uncle, and, uncle. and they both gave you dawah. Yeah, yeah. And then you embraced Islam at nineteen. Yeah, eventually, so I was getting, you know, exposed to Islam from when I was about 15, 14, 15. Inshallah. Yeah, I just didn't want to take that leap of faith because, as you can imagine, a 15, 16, 7 year old young black boy from South East London, music and the lifestyle. Yeah. I, I saw Islam as being restrictive. Yeah. It felt restrictive at first. And it's funny, I was having a conversation with a non-Muslim friend literally three, four days ago, when he was talking about the restrictions that Al-Islam has. I said, no, there's no restrictions. Yeah. Anything that you're not allowed to do is because there's, it's not good for you. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not every single experience is a good experience. Yeah. And what I've noticed that Al-Islam encourages you to experience those things which are going to be a benefit to your your health your yeah. body your lineage yeah. as well yeah. which is very important yeah. you know, sex before marriage and stuff like that yeah. so it all depends on how a person chooses to look at uh is yeah. the cup half full or half empty uh, exactly you know what i'm saying if you can't have sex what, what's this is this half full or half empty i i, I, I would always go for um, it's full up oh yeah always it's not even half full it's full up yeah. Yeah, I'm deceiving <laughs> you. there's a lot of water in there yeah yeah so can you imagine from a non-muslim's perspective not being allowed to have sex outside marriage that's yeah. a restriction yeah but from a muslim's perspective that's preserving your your, your, honor, your honor your lineage as well yeah and, um, and the honour of somebody else, and the, the lineage of somebody, of somebody else, exactly, somebody else's daughter you know, as well. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing that you can now look at the same situation from a different lens X amount of years later yeah. and then come to a different conclusion. Yeah. And that was, that, that was powerful uh, for me yeah. personally. On that topic, I was reading this morning with a brother who was reading Qawad al-Fiqiyah, and it, mm. one of the things which the first Qaeda that they always mention when we're speaking about this topic mm. is that Islam, the, all of the ahkam and the mm. rulings and legislation comes down to one main principle is what you just mentioned, yeah. al Maslaha yeah, yeah. or Dafat Masada. Yeah, yeah. It brings about a benefit to you. That's it. All of the rulings, it's about it brings about a benefit to yeah. you. But you, like you said, you can't see that until you right. change your perspective. But check this: when the brother, when I said it to the brother, when I said it to my friend, he yeah. was like, well, "Why does there have to be a benefit in it?" And I said to myself, "Subhanallah, guidance is from Allah. <laughs> because he's a, he's a he's a he's an intelligent person. Yeah, yeah. He can, he's, he's he's very very business savvy. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's a millionaire. Yeah, at least in assets. Yeah. But then you said, why? Why does the experience have to be beneficial? To me, it was yeah. like strange to hear somebody yeah. say that. You know. So, became Muslim at nineteen. Nineteen. So yeah. that's first year at uni. Or that, 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 no, that okay. Um, or just uh, you had a you had a bit of a gap. Yeah. Okay, you had a gap. Yeah, you went to uni a bit yeah. later as a mature student. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I got kicked. I went to college after after school. Yeah. I went sixth form. Yeah. Didn't do good. Yeah. Went college first year. Got kicked out for being accused of something I didn't do. Yeah. And then I left college and I went to another college. So yeah. I'm a year, well maybe not even two years behind where I should yeah. be academically. Yeah. And it was there in uh, Lewisham College. 
at about 17, 18, because I was there for two years. Yeah. Just as I was leaving, I embraced. So it was the Mashallah. year before I went to uni that I became Muslim. But young still, obviously. I was yeah, young, very young. 19, yeah. 19. What did yeah. you do at college? What was your what in course college, did you involved? Uh, I did a BTEC National Diploma in Multimedia. Yeah. And then in university, I did um, a degree in Digital Media Production. Okay. Which yeah. the time we live in, obviously, digital media is everything, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, uh, with regards to humongous, yeah, humongous, businesses humongous. and projects and everything else. But like we were saying, yeah, um, I don't feel like people normally say when they see like, ah, oh, I can see the route that you've taken. It's as a result of yeah. That's what I always say anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Go it's, on. It's, it's 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 not it's that. Not. Like, yeah, university uh, as as beneficial as it was from other aspects, it didn't really encourage me to exercise my creative side digitally. Yeah. I didn't know how to build a website yeah. by the time I came out of uni. But um, it definitely helped in other aspects that we're probably going to touch upon uh, yeah. uh, you know, later. Okay, so finished college at uni. Uh, what did you? What was your experience like at uni as a Muslim? Because there's a lot of... We're, we're in, obviously, September. My son's going to start university right. in a couple of, sure. yeah, a couple of weeks. As a Muslim, a new Muslim at that, Muslim. what was your experience at university? Can you remember? I know it was a long time ago because we're old men now. No, I remember. <laughs> okay, I met my wife there. Okay, yeah, I met my wife at uni. Um, Shalom, beautiful. Yeah, I was, it was exciting. It yeah. happened exciting for me. I was going dressed Islamically, my, my thobe and my, my kufi and sometimes a scarf. And um, I went to LCC, the London yeah. College of Communication in um, Elephant and Castle. Elephant and Castle. I think it's opposite South Bank. Yeah. Not, is it South Bank? There's, yeah. a big, there's a big university opposite it. But my one was a design university. And it was, um, it was it's a step up from college. It's massive. You're yeah. seeing all these different types of people. Yeah. And um, I went there with two people from college. Yeah. And we were in the same class. Yeah. And it was... It was Non-Muslims, like, Muslims. No, no, they were non-Muslims. Non-Muslims, were non-Muslims. Okay. Um, It was a vibe. Like, I, yeah. I just, I loved it. Found where the prayer room was. Yeah. You know, met up with the brothers. Yeah. It was lovely. Okay, so what, just before, we haven't spoken about this, but what advice would you give to a... Young Muslim starting uni now, mm. in terms of not just the envi- the environment and studies, because you're alhamdulillah, I mean you're a teacher, you're an experienced teacher, you've also been a student, mm. you know what? Just just touch on something. Any yeah. uni or specifically in the, the, UK, the UK, Muslim here, yeah, yeah. Gosh, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good question. What advice would I give them? Yeah. I mean, in terms of because you said, I mean, on a like to touch on the point you say that in terms of you did digital media but that's not necessarily where you got your skills on how on the core skills right yeah Yeah. Uh, you were a muslim at uni you found the prayer room for example like what's your in terms of topic and because obviously loads of people i mean i did a degree in english and i'm I don't do anything with you that at least i don't think i do i might do subconsciously let me ask a question why did you do english lit do you want to know the truth? Honestly. I wanted to go to Saudi to be a teacher. Okay. My motivation was hijra, not necessarily... Passion. passion. Not necessarily the passion, but by year three, I, I enjoyed it. Loved I, it. I loved it, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you, yeah. That's beautiful, mm. but I think that's very rare mm. for somebody to... But yeah, <laughs> the, year, <laughs> the year you're leaving, you start to love. But what I would say, Akhi, is um, if somebody's going to go to uni, my advice would start before they even get to uni is... You're going to be potentially committing the next, say, three years, yeah. degrees like three years, if I'm not mistaken, of your life to something. Be passionate if you can. If you, you know, if you're not in a situation where you're forced to do a subject, pick something that you're going to be passionate about. Yeah. Because actually, when it's all said and done, it's you that's going to sit that exam by yourself. Yeah. Or when it's all said and done, it's you that has to be responsible for submitting the coursework. Yeah. I picked a, a, a topic. As you can see, digital media, well, I was sold that it was, you know, <laughs> it was sold like, yeah, this is what I want to yeah. do. Back then, it must be really early then, and they didn't really know, they didn't have a, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. potentially. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't all boring. Yeah. There was some, I mean, I'm sure there was some, you know, interesting parts of the course, but definitely, if you can pick something that you're passionate about, that will push you through, even when you don't want to do it no yeah. more. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that ex- that advice extends to any aspect of a person's life not yeah. only in uni but even in work as well yeah if you're going to commit the next couple of years of your life to doing something be passionate about it if you can to the best of yeah. your ability and um from the religious uh, side of things as well i would say just just try to get the balance like i said when i first came i was cool feed out and, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah you know um i would just say just 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 keep a balance you know you're a muslim yeah. always maintain your muslim identity yeah but um, don't 
relinquish Islam solely to your external exp- yeah. external um, appearance. Islam is obviously it has its place in the religion, but Islam is is way deeper than that. Yeah, yeah. you know, use those those times to really uh, build a love for yeah. Allah, know more about Allah, and build a connection. Yeah. And my advice is, Juma, unless you've got a lesson on Friday or you're the ISOC head mm. and you have to manage it and yeah. do the khutbah, pray in the mosque. Yeah. The masala in the jama, obviously it's there if you need it, mm. but it's not doesn't replace the mosque with regards to Juma. I'm just going to mention that because mm. I was there at uni and I still remember that. <laughs> okay, so go back. So you're at uni, mm-hmm. alhamdulillah, doing digital media. Digital you've already media. done some media at yeah, college, college as well. Yeah. Um, just for a question there, and this is something we did speak about briefly. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, how do, I mean, we've, we're going to speak about your projects yeah, after, yeah. Late, later, inshallah. Sure. But how do you think that's impacted you in terms of the ability to begin and end a project, mm. to put, to end up, you know, do you know what I mean? Seeing things through, Seeing to, the things through to the end. That's it. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Um, yeah, I personally believe as it relates to, to going to university, a person going to university and subsequently graduating from university isn't indicative of that person being an intelligent person necessarily. Yeah. And the opposite is true. Just because a person didn't go to university doesn't mean they're a bum or they're yeah. not intelligent. It's university is for some people and it's not for others. But one of the distinguishing features that I have noticed about somebody that has graduated is that they've shown the ability to be consistent um, over a long period of time. And I think that there is probably one of the skills that I've developed from a young age. Because it, even if we go back before Islam, I didn't even, we didn't even talk about this. I used to play football yeah. as a kid. Yeah. Semi-pro. Yeah, mashallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah semi-pro. Like yeah. proper, proper serious. Passionate, like, really. People that went on to be professional footballers. Yeah. Kieran Richardson, uh, Rio Ferdinand's little brother, Anton Ferdinand. Yeah. Yeah. I used to play against these guys yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what Dalic or uh, different I, clubs or? I was playing for a few different clubs I played for Villa Court Rovers for Galleons yeah. then uh, Mottenham yeah. where I was playing along the likes of Cherno Samba yeah. um, he's, he, he became famous I'm not too sure what his situation is now but he's still in that the football yeah. realm yeah. Um, I played for Wimbledon QPR yeah. um, Q- a few yeah. teams yeah. but my point was this as a 37 year old uh, man now, I look back on my childhood and I ask myself, like, why is it that I'm so, like, when I want to put my mind to something, why is it that I tend to, nine times out of ten, see it through to the end? Yeah. Right? Because that's, that's what separates people that do from people that don't. Yeah. The ability to start something and despite the setbacks, you don't let that phase you. Yeah. You find a solution, you're solution based, right? And what comes to mind is when I was a kid, Achim, yeah. playing football, um, my parents, yeah. were always I, I can't remember a game that my parents weren't there I'm talking yeah. about mum and dad yeah both of them yeah, amazing I don't, I, I don't have that that, that 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 narrative or that story where I grew up single parent family I yeah. don't have that yeah. I don't have that story to tell yeah. for me to, to portray that of it yeah. 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 my mum and dad were very very active in my yeah. life and because I was talented they pushed, pushed. Like, yeah. I remember my mum working in the city me finishing secondary school travelling on from Bromley yeah. To Brixton with my older yeah. brother, how many buses you'd have to yeah. get on? That's f- Meet far, my mum yeah. Yeah, yeah, in, in, in Brixton, at my yeah. grandma's house. Her driving me all the way to North London just to train for an hour, hour wow. and a half. Yeah, that's how committed. Yeah. So at the time, you don't even really appreciate it because you're a kid. You think, yeah. oh, this is what mum or dad has to do. Yeah. But it's only um, like as a man now, and you look back and you say, what has affected me, good or bad, in my life to make me who I am today? And you think about those things because yeah. your first teacher is your parents, yeah, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. So I saw the, the dedication of how my mum used to, and my dad as well, yeah. treat me. And that's transferred into when I do projects. Even when I used to play, yeah. this is how deep it is, Achim. We would play a match, good or bad, win, yeah. draw, or, or lose. On the way back without foul, my mum, my dad, and my dad's best friend, yeah. who he's known since he was like this high here, yeah, yeah. comes most majority of the matches he would watch as well. Yeah. On the way back, you'd be like, Chris, you done really well here. Or Chris, when you was here, the boy, the guy got the ball, you didn't fight yeah, back. Yeah. So I'm just, as a kid, I'm talking yeah. about from like, say, seven, eight years old, wow. yeah. to all the way to 15. Yeah. This was my life. Yeah, yeah. So I was always used to being a reflective learner. Yeah. And that's, I think, that's really, really important. Like, even if you do launch a project or a product or whatever it is, uh, don't 
be disheartened if it isn't right first time. Yeah. You can reflect, you can improve, and then you can come back again. Yeah. So I had that. That was like my mini university. Yeah. yeah. I had that in terms of my mindset. Yeah. And that's affected me largely, maybe even more than university. Yeah. Sounds like a lot more. Yeah, not to this things, day because yeah. it's like it's practical. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's practical. When, you, um, you touch on something I want to talk on later when we speak about your teaching and how you teach the children in the yeah, Mesor yeah. Academy and stuff like that, which is the types of learners. You said he was a reflective learner. So yeah, yeah. that might be new to a lot of people. What does Definitely, that mean? Because yeah. sometimes some of the things that stop a person, um, I guess, uh, progressing is they don't realize what type of learner they are, just simple mm. as that. You know, some people might That's be reflective, some people might be visual some people might be you know what i mean Beautiful. and once they can identify that they're yeah. able to, to excel excel yeah, yeah, yeah they just yeah, yeah. just don't have that knowledge yeah, yeah. so maybe we can yeah, speak yeah. about that a bit more as well 100%. that's good man amazing um after university mm-hmm. tell me a bit about what you did work wise what happened there because okay. we're going to get to the jam yeah but yeah, before yeah. that you yeah, yeah. so before. yeah what happened next so let me quickly say though um i think i was in year one my first year of uni out of a three-year course yeah my wife had already started the university so yeah. she was in her second year yeah doing a different course uh, yeah. marketing and advertising i think yeah. she graduated in alhamdulillah mashallah t- uh, tag team <laughs> you know i saying it was, it was, it was a it combination was, that was waiting, 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 waiting to happen, waiting to happen <laughs> you know. um, but she wasn't um always practicing yeah and i was a new muslim yeah so you know obviously i'm actually writing a book at, at the moment okay yeah and inshallah the so you, got, you heard it first huh yeah, in the yeah. Maktaba, inshallah. The Maktaba, look yeah. out for it it was, um, the story is still fresh. It's always been fresh, but I was yeah. actually writing about it. Um, yeah. Saw her, liked it, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, found out how to get through to the dad eventually. Yeah. And, um, you know, after expressing my interest, nine months While later, at uni, while at uni. Obviously, yeah, first while, year, she's second year. While at uni, man. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I see spoke to the dad yeah. one time. And then let me give some game. Can I give okay. some game? Go, go, go for it, go for it. Halal game, 100%. Yeah. Halal game. 100%, inshallah. Nothing stops you having game, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as long as it's halal game. So, my uh, advice on halal this Halal games. Is... <laughs> like you play with your wife, then halal. <laughs> one of the things. No that dice, I... no gambling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no dice. I'm, I'm going to speak about yeah, that with the board. But we'll speak about dice later. Oh, yeah, dice is. Oh, is there ikhtilaf in that? I don't know. This, okay. Let's speak about yeah, that later. Let's speak about that later. I'll ask Sheikh Khalid Mashaykh that question as well. On dice, yeah. on the board game. Yeah. He said that if it's okay if it's not gambling, from what I remember, but we can discuss it in more detail. Because, the, because the, there's no, it's, mm, yeah. I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to review and find the first time I'm asking. We're going to get it recorded before no, for this before goes out. Uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't include dice in my board game yeah. for that reason. Yeah. Remind me when you think about restrictions, it causes you to be more creative when we get to board That's games. important. Yeah, very, very, very important. important. So, um, Yes, innovation, in, but in, not in, 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 in a dean. Not in a dean. In, 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 in business. <laughs> in business in, in dunya. Um, yeah. In, yeah. In, in, in so we should, what should, we should be doing? 100%. Okay, yeah. sorry, let's go back. We digress and go on. No, it's cool. Um, so, yeah. Game. I mean, Hello, yeah, game. Hello, game. So, <laughs> yeah, my advice if, um, if a brother, uh, I'm speaking from a, as a brother, seeing a sister, always go through the right channels. Right channels. Uh, don't try to go through the back door. Um, there were other sisters that were on the radar before I met my wife. Yeah. I remember I was a new Muslim. I'm still yeah. trying to figure things out, yeah. making mistakes. Yeah. Then you're wondering why it doesn't happen. Yeah. Allah knows best why, but it could be because you didn't take the correct right channel. avenue. Yeah. So halal game number one, if you're interested in marrying somebody, um, sister to brother, brother to sister, take the correct channels. Um, halal game number two, when I uh, started speaking to my wife with the permission of her father, mind you, yeah. my ad, I was, in my heart anyway, at least, yeah, I'm being dead serious, no yeah. joking. In my heart, I never, I didn't even want to get to know her for no other reason than marriage. Yeah. Like, I never had no other intention than marriage. Pop, yeah. I didn't have no, like, oh, let me just see where this goes. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to marry this yeah, woman. Yeah. And I believe having a serious intention, because I think a lot of marriages if the foundation and that intention at the beginning isn't in the right place, yeah. then it's a recipe for disaster. The moment you have a disagreement with this woman, yeah. or a woman with man, or she does something that rubs you up the wrong way, you're going to not put the effort in to try and save that marriage. Yeah. And that's not what a marriage is about, yeah. you know, in my humble opinion anyway. Yeah. That's the second thing, the intention. The third thing was, um, there was a time 
where there was a bit of a bit of friction, like yeah. in terms Happens, of yeah. trying to yeah, move forward. Yeah. And um, I had to call the dad. Yeah. I had to call the dad. Yeah. So for me, as a you know a revert Muslim, it was strange. Yeah. Never ever done anything <laughs> like this before. But I'm like, okay, this is what we got to do. Let's get with the program. But I was scared because I, I was heard that my father-in-law, my now father-in-law. Yeah. He's a very respected man in his community. Yeah. So I went to Imam Shakil. Yeah. But that's where I grew up in Lewisham. Yeah, that was yeah. my masjid. That's where I took my shahada. Yeah. He married us. Um, and yeah. done the shahada for maybe all of my family. Yeah, yeah. So I said to him, can you call the dad for me, please? I'm, I'm, I'm young 20. Still. Yeah. 20 years young, yeah. actually. No beard, no nothing. <laughs> uh, not that I've got a big one now, but I was even, it was even less. So I said to him, can you call the dad? He goes, I'll call him, but you have to call him first. And I remember it was after Isha. Yeah. It was at winter because it was dark. I walked home from Lewisham Masjid to Bellingham, where I used to live. Yeah. That's like a 20 minute walk if you walk slow. And I plucked up the courage. By the time I got to Catford, I called. Yeah, so from yeah. Lewisham to Catford. You're plucking up your courage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I called. And um, I won't go into the conversation I had, but imagine this, I had a conversation. Nine months later, I got married. Yeah. This is halal game number three. I was very courteous and very polite, called yeah. him Ammi, yeah. you know, uncle this, uncle that. And um, I didn't push it too much, yeah. but I let him know that I'm serious. And I just wanted the opportunity, just give me a chance. Yeah. Meet yeah. me. Give me an opportunity for you to say no to me. Yeah. 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 Um, and then when nine months later, when we got married, this is the day of the nikah. Yeah. So we're all eating some rice yeah. and chicken or meat or whatever. And he said to me, Ismail, you want to know when you married my daughter? So I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking at my dad thinking. <laughs> Trick question. <laughs> I don't want to that. Not married yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Trick question. I'm still new. Like I'm, I'm, I'm dad, young. how do I pass this? <laughs> how do I pass this? What that? friend or something. He said, "Do you want to know when you married my daughter?" And I'm like, I don't even think I answered. He's like, "You married her the day you called me." It was metaphorical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meaning. I won his heart yeah. when I called. Yeah. And that was powerful to me because yeah. just imagine, yeah, imagine if I, not, no disrespect to anybody, but imagine if I had a different upbringing yeah. and if I had my mum and my dad and I wasn't raised to speak to adults with respect. Yeah, and, yeah. And I just called him and said, Unc, uh, I'm feeling your daughter, you know, like, well, can, can we do the nikah? Yeah. Or I, I was yeah. a bit more ghetto in my approach. Yeah. Maybe that would have caused him to run a mile. Yeah, yeah. But I wasn't like that. And I, I, I attribute that, obviously, first and foremost, to the grace, by the grace and the mercy of Allah. But my upbringing. Yeah, yeah. And this is a, a very, very important message to parents to make sure you're, if you're going to take the responsibility and get married and bring in life into this world, raise your kids properly. Even if the marriage doesn't work out, yeah. you know, that yeah. to, your, to a degree it's not within your control whether it works out or not. You know, yeah, obviously take course. it with a pinch of salt. Some people do, oh, they, they are the, the reason, cause. Yeah, they are the cause <laughs> of their marriage. But sometimes two It just doesn't work out, yeah. It's, it's not compatible. It's, it's gonna end, yeah. But that shouldn't impact and infringe on your relationship and the, 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 the cultivation and the education that you give your child. Yeah. So I, I do, you know, thank Allah first and foremost and then my parents. So yeah. that's halal game number three, man. If you're going to speak to your potential father-in-law, make sure you're courteous because you don't know. It could be one thing that you said that entered the heart and that could be the cause of you, inshallah, getting what you want. Or not getting what you want if you said the wrong thing. Or not getting what yeah, you want. That's, that's yeah, the, and it's, yeah. um, that's it's what important. I wanted to touch yeah. upon. So anyway, ended up getting married to my wife. So you, well, the, the question was what? After uni. <laughs> yeah, after uni. But on that point, I would say that um, I usually advise people in that position not to contact the dad directly themselves unless he's expecting their call and he said ask him to call me i'd always that's, say no, get the imam or someone that knows him yeah yeah like an true. elder same yeah, age that's very with true. you you're there but you're just silent like this no. you know i'll just say whatever you want me to say but here's the elder that's going to be no. speaking i'd always ask you know that's yeah a very very good point because it's sometimes it can no because it's, it, it could be can Arab. Because it could be outside, a, outside of the outside culture, outside of the culture. Yeah, it could backfire the dad it's and the dad, dad on that yeah. level and so, you're right, you're right. Sometimes, You yeah. reminded me, actually, because before that incident, I wanted to meet her dad. Yeah. And I was like, where does your dad pray? Because Ramadan, you know. Yeah, Ramadan. yeah I was going to say, where does your, your dad pray? Tarawih. So this is the naivety of the new Muslim, oh, isn't it? Gosh. And I thought I was working brain. 
I thought I was onto something, man. I was like, yeah, this is genius. I'm gonna go there, see where he's praying to that way, maybe pray next to him and oh, somebody come up and try and do all of that business. He that was a halal game that would have flopped. <laughs> That's why I didn't include it in the halal g- game, you know, free play. Don't do that, that's not halal game. Yeah, but she said to me, you know, she said, no, don't do that. You can't, you, like, it's, 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 it's not considered to be acceptable for the future, or the husband or the, the son-in-law to go direct. Yeah. So um, yeah. I, that was just my experience, yeah. though. Yeah. So after after university, Hamza, so you got married while you was at uni, still a student? I got married, yeah, so I was in my last year. Amazing, brilliant stuff. So again, year. highlighting that you don't have to just follow the norm, finish uni, Absolutely, do this, man. get married. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people do that. And Absolutely. It's, and, you know, it doesn't work out. Ish, yeah? Or, yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? Or they think that you can't be married while you're at uni. Yeah. And the opposite is true. If there's compatibility and support from the f- parents, That's, importantly. Oh, oh gosh. So important. Yeah. Actually. Can I then, touch upon that? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, man. Again, um, I had so much support, sometimes even financial support. Yeah. My mum and dad to this day, well, alhamdulillah, they're still married. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, my mum, she embraced Islam, but at the time she wasn't a Muslim. Yeah. She was very, very supportive. So yeah. can you imagine I'm married into a culture? My wife's from Eritrea. Yeah. I'm married into a culture. And it's not one of these cultures whereby, all right, you can marry her and she stays at her house, you stay at. Yeah. Which I don't necessarily see anything wrong with it, yeah, yeah. but the culture doesn't really accept doesn't it. Accept generally that. speaking, yeah, yeah. you have to. You want to be, you know, marry my daughter. You have to be a man now. Yeah, yeah. Go get a house. Go get this. Yeah. Go get that. So in order to get a house, obviously you need to have um, a guarantee, a guarantor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one month's rent. Yeah. I'm, I'm a uni student that's living off of um, EMA or whatever. Yeah, whatever it was know. back then. Yeah. Yeah. So parents were instrumental. Yeah. In, 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 in helping um, to facilitate ease. Yeah, so yeah. I was able to, to, yeah, to, to, to get ahead. married. Yeah. Um, so last year of my uni, I got married. Sorry, bro, remind me of the question. Yeah, so after uni, what was next work-wise? Because mm. you're married, you're not just, yeah. you're not married, you're, you know, you're looking for a job. Yeah, so I, I think at the time when I got married, I, was, I had like a, like a weekend job. I was working in Lily Whites, remember Lily okay, Whites? Yeah, yeah, Lily Whites. It's almost like a JD type yeah. of vibe. I was working in Lily Whites, then I, I, I progressed. I went to yeah. Sainsbury's. Yeah. Yeah, I was doing my shifts in Sainsbury's. And for me, I've never, ever been too proud to um, to do any job. Yeah. No matter yeah. if I feel like I'm overqualified or not. Yeah. If I need to make money... Yeah, you're going to work. i got to work. Yeah, I don't, yeah. It doesn't matter what it is, man. Like it or lump it, man. Yeah. It's a responsibility. Yeah. And I think that's really, really important too. That's another, can I say, halal game number yeah. four. That if you're going to take on the, the responsibility of taking somebody under your authority, like a woman or, or children then by hook or by crook, you're going to have to, in a halal way, yeah? yeah? By hook or hook, not crook. Oh, yeah, by, by, yeah. Hook, <laughs> by hook or what? Hook and hook, <laughs> whatever okay. it is. By hook and hook, yeah. You know what we're going to change in the series? Halal game, it's not in the matter, it's not in the matter, it's halal game now. <laughs> just come and mash up everything. Um, yeah, you have to be a man. And yeah. just because you might not like to do a particular job, that shouldn't influence whether you do it or not. If you have to work in yeah. Sainsbury's or Lily White's or... Wherever to, to yeah. provide for your family, that's what you do, and inshallah, ta'ala, there's honor uh, yeah. in that. So 100%. 100%. You have to, working is a must when you're young and that's it, you that's know it. that age. And I think I've been working from like 16, to be honest. Yeah. But um, to answer your question, um, that's where I was working for a time. And then by the time I was finishing up uni, I knew I was you know, getting to the end of my, my degree. I wanted to, you know, I think um, a few brothers were going to, very few though at the time, were going to Saudi to teach. Yeah. So I contacted Abdul Haq Baker. Yep. As you know, he was the link to, to at the time. To, to, to yeah, to he, teach he English. was uh, managing an English language school, wasn't he? Yeah, it? it's called ELS in yeah, Jeddah. Yeah. I remember I contacted him. I preserve him. Lovely yeah. brother. Uh, me and your Rabbi, Old school. I, yeah, I consider him to be an uncle. I was actually speaking yeah. to him a couple of days ago, actually. Yeah. We keep in touch. Yeah, he's like a mentor to me as well. Yeah. If I'm lovely, with you. lovely guy, yeah. man. And I protect him and his family. I mean, I mean. So I messaged him, I emailed him, so and I was like, um, you know, somebody come on, got, I got a desire to go to Saudi. What do I need in order to get there? Yeah. This is another game that I want to give people, actually. So he said to me, all right, you've got, you're getting your degree now. What, they, what the companies want over there is, um, what did he say? He said degree, yeah. he said a CELTA, yeah. and he said experience. Yeah. All right. So remember, I didn't have them at the time. Yeah. So Salta is teaching English as a foreign language certificate, basically. Exactly. Cambridge, which English you, language teaching which, to adults. Yeah. Exactly. Which you could do for over a month yeah. or a three month period. And I think a six month. Yeah. I think there was three, yeah. three different uh, variations to get the qualification. So I said, all right, cool. I got to do that. Okay, cool. Yeah. I got to get experience. Cool. So oftentimes in life, right, 
you want to do something, but you might not necessarily know how. Yeah. And even when you do f- find out the way you think, oh, that's long. Yeah. I don't think like that. Yeah. I knew I wanted to get from here, where I am now, current location to destination, yeah. which is Saudi Arabia. Yeah. The journey was CELA deg- uh, degree and experience. Yeah. I just worked backwards. Yeah. I yeah. worked backwards. I found out, okay, who, where's doing this, what uh, location is doing a CELA nearest to me? Yeah. How much is it? I think my parents even probably paid for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and my wife actually ended up doing the CELA Excellent. together. Yeah. yeah. And then at the same time, I was thinking of doing it like two or three days a week. The other two days a week, I got a part-time job volunteering yeah. at Iqra, when Iqra was um, next door to the Brixton Masjid. Yeah, yeah. So I made a combination between self getting my qualification and getting and experience at the same, at the same time. time. Perfect. Yeah. And um, again, when I see an issue or a problem, yeah. I'm thinking, what's the solution? What's the yeah, way around it? How can I best get to my destination yeah. in the easiest time uh, possible? And that's what I did. Yeah. I did that, got myself, alhamdulillah, we both passed. Alhamdulillah. Um, and it's not easy to pass either, so it can be difficult. Yeah, when, very challenging, yeah. man. Very yeah. challenging. Um, and especially for the intensive, it's yeah. even more challenging. Yeah. Um, so I got myself, got the qualification, and then I just got accepted just, yeah. like, just like that. He Excellent. accepted me, and that's where, that was my first time leaving the nest. And as yeah. I mentioned to you before, it was um, it was nice because I, I don't come from a history. I'm not one of these guys back in Jahili. I had enough money and enough, yeah. I didn't have that. Yeah, I was a yeah. normal black boy in South East London. Yeah. That was my lifestyle. Yeah. You know, I was good at football yeah. and music. Yeah. That's all I was good at. And I was I was, a, I, was, a, I, was a, I was a decent guy in school. I wasn't yeah. academically advanced. Yeah. But what put, uh, what distinguished me from other students? I just never gave up. Yeah, yeah. And that is again halal game number. I think we're on number five right now. Yeah. If you can develop that, is that the word tenacious, tenaciousness about yeah. you, where you can commit, you've got the ability to commit your mind to something and nothing but death is going to stop you from getting there, then inshallah ta'ala in various aspects of life you're going to succeed because that's what separates people that do that from people that don't. And that is, not that you fail, yeah. failing is inevitable, yeah, yeah. it's that you don't give up. Everybody yeah, fails, achieve. you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I got myself to Saudi and it was yeah. the first time making decent money yeah. that I was able to save. I was yeah. able to give my wife money yeah. and life was good, man. Yeah, that English teacher life yeah. when you're young, yeah. that money's Very good. good. When I was only a, had one child. Yeah, only yeah. One child. Not, expenses aren't much. Kids aren't old, they don't have loads of... Exactly. It's beautiful. It's lovely, yeah. I remember beautiful, when I was man. teaching part-time well, as a student in the Jamia yeah, in the summer, it. loved it. Yeah, yeah. End of the month, 11,000 real. I'm looking at it and thinking to myself, shopping. Yeah. It was amazing. It was amazing. Nice, One thing I think is important to highlight, though, as well, is what you mentioned, teaching and volunteering. Yeah. I think, I don't know if it's a culture, mm. but, you know, young people, if you say, okay, look, you need to get experience, and the best way you can get experience is to do voluntary work. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about money now because you don't have any overheads, but mm. the voluntary work is going to benefit you more than For money sure. would anyway somewhere else or not having any money For sure. and not doing anything. For sure. So I think that's really important to kind of drum home. I try mm. to drum home a lot. You know, mm. if you can't, if you, while you're waiting, trying to get a job, mm. go and volunteer. No, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't, when I say volunteer, I mean volunteer in a workplace. Yeah, yeah. Not just, okay, I'll turn up when I want to. No, volunteer committedly. Yeah, as if you were getting as paid. As if you're getting paid nine important. to five, two days a week okay. at that charity yeah, yeah, yeah. or at that, for example, organization yeah. or in this. Yeah, Because it's going to, the skills you're going to get is going to be. And that's what it is. Yeah. It's, 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 you're, 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 like you said, your building skills are going to benefit you. Yeah, exactly. Actually, to this day, yeah. I get sometimes a bit upset. My eldest daughter, Mariam. She remember yeah. Mariam? Yeah. She's 14 now. Oh, sure. She's going to be yeah. in year 10. Yeah, yeah. Year 10, yeah. It's like two years and that's it. Yeah. So like, if I say to her, uh, Mimi, can you dish me up some food? Yeah, yeah. Rice and chicken, for example. Yeah. And she brings me up the rice and chicken. Yeah. You might think this is a bit pedantic, yeah? yeah? But this is how my mind works. And there's like gravy dripping down the yeah. side. I'll say, I'm, I'm appreciative of yeah. that she's done it for yeah. me, but I'll be like, me. Perfect it. <laughs> if you do, do, do it properly. Yeah, it's because... like when they save you tea, it's like, okay, here's a tea, but it's not full up. <laughs> what type of cup of tea is that? Bring a cup of tea and bring it up to a full up, innit? You're not going to serve that. <laughs> the thing is, it's, it seems minute, but if you can yeah. get stuff like how you serve somebody tea or how you, like sometimes you might bring me tea without a saucer. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As she's bringing it, it's spinning on the carpet. Yeah. If you can, at a young age, yeah. 
um, remind them and cultivate them and develop teach them, good develop good habits. That's then right. When yeah. you get older, it's going to be second yeah, nature. Yeah, that's right. It becomes it's fixed Do now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. I think that's what we have to, to, to focus on on our children. And, um, you know, you want good for them, right? Of course. Yeah. So sometimes that can translate in you being a bit harsh, yeah. or being a bit tough love, isn't it? It can. Yeah. That's that's what that's one of my struggles yeah. right now. But yeah. Um, yeah, what was he talking about? Yeah, so we were talking about we haven't got there yet. Okay. I think I think we've yeah we we're talking about Jeddah. Let's talk about Jeddah okay. life because I loved yeah. I loved like holidays in Jeddah, in Jeddah when yeah, I was yeah. in Medina. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about about working in Jeddah and how you ended yeah. up from Jeddah to the Islamic University of Medina. Yeah, okay. we haven't got there yet. Yeah. So um, I love Jeddah. Uh, like I said, I was making some money, so I was able to give my wife money. I was able to spend on things. I was able to go for. Um, for Umbra, yeah. whenever we want, stay in nice hotels, um, traveling to the beach, you know, did I say restaurants? No, we didn't. Yeah. Restaurants were, were, were lovely. Yeah. Um, and it was just a different, it was different from living in South East London. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes going to, to, to visit Sheikh Mohammed Maliki yeah. at the time. And I mean, obviously I still love and respect him. By the time he was like, a, like from the legend to me at yeah. the time. Yeah. Um, I was studying Arabic at my home. Because yeah, he was teaching, he's been teaching and giving da'wah for, for years. Fair from his teacher, Sheikh Muhammad, um, Muhammad Jami, from the... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, from, that from, long. from that long, yeah. Wow, Mashallah. From that long, he, 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 he told me the story when they used to attend the lessons of. He's solid, no. Yeah, man, he's, he's solid. Again, 100%. a lovely, lovely um, individual. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that, that was my life in Jeddah. Unfortunately, it was, um, it was cut short because I think I was out there for about six months. Or maybe yeah. just under. And as my wife was coming over, because I left by myself initially for the first month and I had to... Sort out know, the paper, visas and, and stuff, stuff like, like that. Yeah. She was pregnant with my second child. Yeah. Can you imagine? I'm over the moon now. Yeah. It's like just starting out my life. Yeah. And she, the day before she came to, to Jeddah, she went for the three-month scan. We found out she was going to... They, they said, the, the doctor dropped it like this. There's a 70, 30% chance that your wife, or that you're going to have uh, Mrs. Muhammad, um, had the child with Down syndrome. Mm. So obviously that, that shook her up to the core. Yeah. And I remember getting the call. I was actually teaching a student at the time in my house, no furniture. Yeah. Just in an empty room with just like a table. Yeah. Just like this, just teaching him. And she told me, and I just remember being so supportive. Yeah. So like at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Yeah. In a sense, we're still, it's not as if like, oh, if the baby's healthy, we're going to love the baby this much. But if the baby's got a you know, special needs, then we're going to love, you're going to yeah. love the baby regardless. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, on that note, if you don't mind me saying this, I'm going to say something that some people may uh, deem to be a bit controversial. But as a, as a parent of a special needs child, right? Mm. I've heard people say, like I'm talking about from listening to the radio, I wouldn't have it any other way. I yeah. wouldn't change it. Yeah. So then I feel conflicted in myself. Yeah. You know, I don't know about any other... Uh, special needs I know, I know Down syndrome isn't the most severe and even on the Down syndrome spe uh, spectrum you've got a there's a level isn't it yeah, you can yeah. have mild and you can have really severe yeah. my daughter her name's Ruqayya I call her Cookie or yeah. KK for short she's definitely not severe yeah. she's not, not mild, mild. She's... but she's, she's, she can communicate yeah. she can go to the toilet we're teaching her to clean herself now and stuff like that but when you say I wouldn't have it any other way Knowing the difficulties that a child with special needs will encounter in their life, yeah, it just doesn't sit right with me. Yeah, yeah. Why would you be happy or you're okay with the fact that they're going to, for example, in my in my in my experience, with a daughter, she's gonna have, she might have it, she might find it difficult to get married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's gonna find it difficult to build friendships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's not gonna have the same experience that me and you had going to a primary school and secondary yeah. school. It's gonna be different. Yeah. So. Um, if I, obviously in an idle situation, I pray that all my children, myself, have full health. Yeah, yeah. But it's just something that I feel, you know, yeah, a bit yeah. conflicted about when I hear people say, yeah. like, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. What's your opinion on that? Yeah, do you know what? Okay, so, alhamdulillah, we had, we had my son was, you know, yeah. he had uh, Adam uh, and Abdullah before that, he mm. died when he was three days, and Adam, he died when he was three years and so odd. So we had a son with, with two kids. Okay. we had two. So one died after a couple of days. You know, he had a, a, a severe condition. Ab, uh, that's Abdullah, the first one. That was the first boy. The second is uh, Adam. He lived for three years and he died. And he had uh, severe uh, disabilities as well. So he was like blind in one eye. He had, uh, if I'm going to be explicit, 
He's, he was born with a hole in his skull, yeah, so he had yeah, brain yeah, yeah. growing outside of his head as opposed to inside. They couldn't operate on that. And he had uh, one limb was short, his leg, yeah, yeah. so he couldn't sit up and stuff like that as well. So the, I guess it's 100% right in the sense that if you had the, if you could make du'a, yeah. you'd make du'a for health. health. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but knowing that that's not going to happen, and this is a decree of Allah subhanahu wa mm. ta'ala, mm. then it doesn't change, like you said, the love you have Definitely. for the child. Definitely. And also, you start to see things through a different lens. Mm. Meaning, yeah, and what I mean by that is that the, the, the barakah that you have, it's, i.e., for example, I'll give an example. Mm. Imagine you're in a constant ibadah, mm. right? Mm. Okay, constant ibadah, would mean you're constantly getting rewarded, isn't it? Mm. But we have things that distract us, right? Mm. Like we were speaking about earlier about, you know, I think it was with your khushu isn't always there. Mm -hmm. You might be distracted with work, with other things. So you forget. Mm. But when you've got a child who needs 24-hour care, yeah. looking after, yeah. and you're doing that with the right intention, you're in constant ibadah, you're getting constant reward, basically. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you're looking after someone that can't look after themselves, right. right? So there, there's an opportunity there. You yeah. know, as opposed to, so although it's difficult and it's a responsibility, it's not a burden because it's a mm. blessing. Yeah. So from that angle, so yeah. from the angle of, but without a doubt, you know, you, you know, you look and you think, okay, what type of future or life is that yeah. child going to have? Yeah. You know, yeah. you, you can't say I wouldn't have it any other way because it's almost like you're wishing that that's, that right. should happen yeah. multiple times. Yeah. And you wouldn't wish for that to happen another time, a third time, a for fourth sure. time. For sure. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So from that angle, I guess, um, yeah, you wouldn't, yeah, you would have it another way. If you could. If, if you, you could, could yeah, yeah, but you know, you can't. And I guess the example is the lady that came to the Messenger of Allah, Salah, with fits. And fits she, yeah, yeah, she used to fit, she used to have, go into fits. Yeah. So the Messenger of Allah told her, you can be, he came to ask the Messenger of Allah to make dua that Allah removes this from her, oh, wow. right? So it cures her of this yeah, yeah. thing that happens, these fits. Yeah. So the Messenger of Allah said, or you can be patient mm. and your reward is with Allah. No, no, no. Right? So there was an opportunity here. Yeah. So she chose to be patient with it. Mm. And then as you know, the hadith, she said, I could just make dua that when that, this happens, I don't, my aura doesn't become uncovered. She oh, had okay. obviously women, yeah, but yeah. then they had, yeah, yeah. you know, sure. they had shyness. Uh, mm -hmm. So that that was the du'a that the Messenger of Allah made. That was yeah. so she sought, so she had the opportunity, but she yeah. sought the patience and the reward with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Knowing that, with Allah is better. Most with Allah is better. Yeah. So and, and that, no, yeah. you know, I struggle with du'a. Like, yeah. I'm honest. It's like children with special needs. You can't always approach them the same way you would approach a child that doesn't have special needs. Yeah. And um, if you, when I say you, not you, Abdul Wahid, but as a parent, are going through things. Yeah. Then, or you might not even have the tools and the 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 the, the, the skills to deal with that because it's new, isn't it? Yeah, it's a new yeah. territory. It's not as if we, we studied how to to, yeah. to look after children with special needs. Yeah. Then sometimes you can feel like you're not doing enough. Yeah. And that's what I struggle with. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? With the um, busy, hectic lifestyle and obviously with the cancer. Yeah. Um. So if I'm having a low time. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I struggle to to sometimes. My patience, yeah, yeah, what the noise, the amount of noise I can yeah, take, yeah, especially if I'm in pain, yeah, yeah, especially if I'm in a lot of pain, yeah. Then I, I tend to find my other kids, I can say to them, kids, be quiet, or yeah, kids, go to bed, yeah, yeah, don't get out of bed, and that's it, yeah. But with a child, that's you don't, yeah, yeah, it's, it's challenging, it's challenging, definitely. Yeah. All I can say is, I mean, I'm, I'm you mentioned yourself, I'm, with me as well. Alhamdulillah for our wives, are you? <laughs> yeah, definitely, because they're the you know, Alhamdulillah, yeah, 100%. they. They have the kind of empathy and stuff. So, subhanAllah, there's a lot to talk about and there's a lot that's uh, a lot of benefit. Mm. You're in Jeddah six months, so six your months. wife got this news, got which was news. obviously you're there to support her. Yeah, 30, 30, 70, 30% 30 chance yeah. downs. Yeah. They, they put the needle in to yeah. find that out. Yeah. Um, but she came over. Yeah. Obviously, um, this is, and she came over in Ramadan, so it's yeah. a month of making so, uh, Oh, gosh, yeah, yeah we, 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 went to the, we went to Makkah, we was doing everything. Um, and I didn't want to leave. Yeah. But Abdul Haq again going back, he said to me, Ismail, listen, I know how much you love being here. And you yeah. know what I just told you what I had to do to get there. Yeah, yeah. And I just got my feet wet, you know? <laughs> and then he's like, How did I didn't get no car or anything yeah. like that? But he's like, listen. No gyms. No, yeah, <laughs> not, not, not at that stage. But then yeah. um, he said, You have to go back. 
I'm gonna force you to go back because you have to be with your wife. And yeah. I respect that so much because that's advice from somebody that cares about you. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It would have been probably more advantageous to him for me to be Stay there, there as a teacher. As a teacher, because you, you need teachers. Yeah. And he needs teachers. Yeah. And I think they pay for uh, each Processing. company has an X amount, yeah, process and, and X amount of visas are allocated to. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So I was a liability now. Yeah. But he never ever made me feel like a liability. Yeah. So I respect him eternally for for, for, yeah. for that decision there. Went back to the UK. My wife had the baby and she did have Down syndrome. Alhamdulillah. And um, yeah, three months after that, she was born with... Um, sorry, she was born with two holes in her heart. But three months after that, she had to undergo open heart surgery. Yeah. Which, as I mentioned, it was the, probably the first trauma that I can ex uh, that I remember as an adult experiencing. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember really much trauma, trauma like yeah. maybe some trauma from my childhood, but yeah. nothing like seeing my daughter on steroids, um, with all these tubes, about five tubes yeah. going in and out of her body. Yeah. In pain. And you yeah. can't do nothing. Yeah, that's a know? sad sight. Kids is just it was yeah, crazy, man. It's traumatic. 100%. And just to give Abdul Haki's flowers again, remember, I was in Jeddah making about twelve thousand. Yeah. He said, listen, I'm going to send you back. Yeah. But at that time, he would, he had a um, street. Yeah. He said, I'm going to send you back and I'm going to put you on an 18,000. MashaAllah, alhamdulillah. 18,000 yeah. pound salary. I remember I'm like 22 now, 23. Yeah. It, wasn't, it didn't end up being 18,000, yeah. but the, <laughs> the offer was still nice. I appreciated the offer. Um, and yeah, and I was like... Nah, his intention at the time would have been 18K and, anyway. And Whatever me, worked out afterwards. Me and Larry yeah. wouldn't for that, you know. And, yeah. um, so I went, from, I went from job to job. Yeah, a lot of us have to hack a lot of stuff. Yeah. Nah, Just big like time, man. Awarded big time, I mean, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. He helped me get my wife out of it too. For real? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Solid, yeah. man. Picked up from the airport late at night, stuff yeah. like that, yeah. Solid, actually. The story, actually, I gave him the wrong time. I don't know what to at night. I thought it was 12 o'clock. Yeah. He's gone to the airport, 12 o'clock midnight. Wow. So he's like, he found me. I'm in Medina, he's in Jeddah. No. Well, I was coming from the UK. So I'll get his phone call. He's like, and I'm at the airport. I feel he was with someone else. Yeah. <laughs> I got, I said 12 o'clock. He goes, yeah, it's, look. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> mate, I got the time on It's 12 o'clock in the afternoon oh, the following day. Okay. He had to go home. No way. All the way back home and come all the way back no, out. But he still did it. Yeah, he's so, solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's solid, man. 100%. He's, F, he's he supports and he's no, and again it's you know he's not doing it except because yeah, to benefit love, you. Man. There's nothing yeah, in it for him at all. Hundred percent. Yeah. Man. Anyway, Abdul Haq, I apologise huh? <laughs> if I haven't already said it. But Jazakallah khair. No. So um, yeah, that was Jeddah. So um, I went back while I was there, um, had the baby and whatnot, and then um, that's when I found out that I got accepted to the Islamic University of Medina. I was okay. working for Street, the yeah. company that had, had, you know, the, the job that he, he lined up for me. Yeah. And um, brother walked in, asked me what my government name was. I said, yeah. it's Chris or Christopher. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, you got accepted to, to, to the jam. Yeah. And I didn't believe him. Yeah. I went in, he said, come. I saw my name on the screen, Christopher Beaumont. But because it's such an English name, well, yeah. actually, Beaumont's a French name. Okay. But um, I think French and German. Oh, yeah. it's just French, it's French, it's French, it's French. Yeah. It means beautiful mountain. Inshallah. Um, I still didn't believe that that was me because yeah. like, there's probably loads of Christopher yeah, Bowman. Yeah. So you could just have to do a Google search. Yeah, yeah you could find out 10, yeah, 15. More than that, man. <laughs> that's in London. <laughs> and the majority of them are white as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like a proper white name. Mm. And um, when I really was convinced that it was me was when a family relative uh, of my cousin, of my wife, sorry, her cousin, he went over to apply for the Jamia. He went to the Idarat al al Tasjil and he saw my face. Yeah. He saw my picture and that was when it was like, oh, this is real. Yeah. So, so he, he messaged back, you've been accepted. Yeah. And I was like, I could. I, I remember calling my missus. Actually, before when I when I found out from Abdul Haq Kufi when I was sitting at work, yeah. I called my wife. She was like, um, it's weird what you remember, man. You know, you know uh, events in your life that are pertinent and they mean something and it's like they... They stamp the imprint in your mind. She was in Lewisham because yeah. she's a Balam girl. Yeah. She's from Balam. Yeah. My married her, took her to Lewisham. Yeah, yeah. She was walking in Lewisham. Took her from the comfort yeah. of Balam to the ghetto the of Lewisham. The ghetto. Oh, gosh. Gosh, how could these far south east? How could I, man? <laughs> Blue Borough. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, she was in Lewisham and she screamed <laughs> out of excitement. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was happy for me, man. She was happy for Andalo. me. Yeah, good memories, I think. So here, so finished one degree, alhamdulillah. You finished one degree. You know, you're working, getting a salary. Working, getting a salary. But your passion was to go to? 
the yeah. Jamia Islamic University of Medina, knowing, yeah. knowing yeah. you're going to give up that and yeah. go on a, a monthly, which is it's it's not nothing, but compared to what stipend, your yeah. stipend. Just to clarify, yeah. I think I applied for the Islamic University of Medina before I went there. I did, 100%. Yeah, yeah 100%. I applied for the Islamic University. So my, my passion was to study. Yeah. So let's say, I, for example, I applied in 2007, yeah. for example. By 2008, the year that I wanted to get accepted, I, I wasn't accepted. Yeah. So I was obviously heartbroken. Yeah. And yeah. I just thought, okay, khalas, I'm going to knock that on the head. Um, uh, studying is not for me. Yeah. Then I pursued the sewa. Yeah. That was the second thing. Yeah. Other life thing happened, I like ended up coming back. And then I got accepted. accepted. So it was two years after I applied. Yeah. So that 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 was um that added to the shock factor. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I didn't reapply again. Yeah. And I thought, you know, that chapter it was, was over, closed. Yeah. Yeah. So then I went back and I left everything. Now knowing that I'm going to be living off of 840, 840 real, real, which is what 120 pound at the time, 130 yeah. pound a week, yeah. uh, a month. Sorry. Yeah. Which is obviously with a family. Enough. With and, a family. Yeah. With a family. So that was a, you still had the passion to study. A hundred percent. But yeah. I, I tell you what, though, and I want to be honest. Like I said, because of the family support, yeah, I was never worried financially. Yeah. I was never worried. Even if I didn't have no money, I knew the bank of mum and dad will help me out yeah. if I need to. Yeah. And the, you know, I, I mean, support's important. I think I think this is a message that I, that needs to go out to parents. Yeah. As well, uh, especially you know raising Muslim kids in the UK. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're you're, and they they're growing up. They're adults, but they still need support. support yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, you know, when they, especially when they're young. You yeah. know, young getting married, young trying to stay do things which are on the correct way to do things. Especially, yeah. you know, that support has to be there. Can you imagine this? Yeah. yeah, I'm not trying to blow my trumpet here, yeah. but call a spade a spade. To graduate, and to just speak on behalf of me and you here, it's an achievement. Yeah. Yeah. It's not easy to go yeah. and study in a strange country. Yeah. Hot. Yeah. Learn a different language, become almost native, yeah. then do another four years in the faculty amongst Arabs yeah. and still come out of your sanity at the yeah. end of it, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of khair in terms of businesses and products and, you know, the madrasa that we've opened up, yeah. both of us yeah. have come from that. But just imagine if I didn't have that support. Yeah, yeah. My life could have went a completely different yeah. way yeah. if I never had that support system. Yeah. That says, you know, don't worry about it. We, 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 we'll look we'll, we'll you. help you. Yeah, we'll support yes, you. Yes, I, I feel really to this day yeah. passionate about helping. The less, um, what can I say? Um, not the less able, but the, 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 those people that don't have ordinarily opportunities. Yeah, yeah. creating opportunities for them, yeah. giving them opportunities, and uh, showing them the power of I believe in you. Yeah. That's what Baker did to me. Yeah, yeah. Actually, when I went to uh, ELS, I didn't know how to teach English. <laughs> I didn't know what the p- present perfect was yeah, in the, yeah. the verb. To, sorry, yeah, the verb to be. Yeah. When Whether I you put that, a or an before a vowel, a word starts with a vowel or starts with a consonant, you put a or an all that stuff. When yeah. I heard that is, am, and are are verbs, I was like, I've got it all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it all wrong my whole life. I said, I thought a verb was a doing word. I was, is, am. Um, I remember on the job, learn, I've got to do it like Khaled Barry. What's this one? Yeah, yeah. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, um, Khalid's another support, another yeah, Khalid, that's, Badi, yeah, yeah, benefits. Graduate, um, he was Scottish. graduate from Hadith, Irish, 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 yeah, Irish Irlandi, one Irlandi. Of, yeah, one from of the Hadith, online yeah? teachers. Hadith, Hadith, like you, we're gonna come beautiful, to that. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, amazing, brother. He's the one that told me I got accepted. Yeah, I remember you saying, yeah. "No, it's, it's, I'm at it's, home, it's, and I get a phone call from from Saudi, yeah. Medina. Yeah. Mark, you got accepted to the Jamia. I'm like, whoa, Mad. it was, yeah, it Mad. was blew my mind. Mad. So, yeah, that for, for me was um, on that topic. Well, like you said, not many people graduate. Not many yeah. people come back with their sanity. I mean, a lot of people do, but what, <laughs> most people do. Some people don't. Odd person doesn't. Yeah. Uh, in that, there was a brother. I remember when I went, I was in the Mathead. One of the brothers from uh, local from Croydon. Mm. He didn't. He 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 couldn't. He didn't have the patience mm. for the two years of the Mathead, let alone the six years of the whole yeah. degree program, yeah. Yeah. and. It was a case that he's there, hadn't studied any Arabic whatsoever. Wow. And they're speaking to him in Arabic. Mm. <laughs> and he's got, I don't understand mm. you. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're, he just, it was too many. Yeah, frustrating. Like, you know, a convert, but he's a revert as well. Mm. Like, English, English. When I say English, English, I mean, mm. you know, white. not mixed, yeah, white English completely, right? Yeah. And he just left after a year and a half to do what? To get a job and to work and to earn money. Yeah. You know I mean, so you know, everyone's different. Everyone has a different experience, basically. Mm. Mm. And there was another brother. I don't know if you might have known about about a French brother that was there, and I don't know if it was a fact of, 
you know, missing home or the or just seeing sand in the heat, he ended up, you know, going a bit oh, for real. off the imaginary. And then, oh. then uh, Sheikh Abdul Hadi, was, uh, I think, the mudir of the Mathead at that time, mm-hmm. he said, what's wrong with you Western brothers? Mm. <laughs> It's also you Western brother, you come here, you mm. you know, you can't mm. cope, you lose your plot, you have to go home, you're homesick all the time. Mm, yeah, it's like yeah. you're looking at all the other students from Africa, from yeah. Bangladesh, and everyone's mashing they're coping, but the world from yeah. West, yeah, yeah, like yeah. we come there privileged. Yeah. So we like, you know, things have to be a certain way. Yeah. We want our toast <laughs> like this, we want our <laughs> eggs like that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We, yeah, you know, 100%. so 100%. perhaps it's a, it's the Western privilege and yeah. you know yeah. that that could be. But anyway, let's go back to the jam. So you've you've got accepted. Got accepted. Tell me a bit about life in Medina as a student. Well, was you there by yourself? Yeah. You got family, yeah. working. What was yeah. your? Yeah, you just took me back when you said that. I remember when I got there, I was uh, one of the things I do remember. I was really looked after by the tulab that preceded me. Yeah. You know, they picked me from the airport. Um, Abdul Hakim Fingers. He was yeah. instrumental in you know running around because he was he, he preceded me by a year academic yeah. year. Yeah. You know, let me sleep on his floor and yeah. stuff like that. And that's really nice. I remember that as well. There's always that one that's the year before. There's that, Be- there's that helping right. out, making sure you get settled properly. And you have to continue that cycle, that circle of yeah. work, man. Yeah, yeah. When you, you, uh, you might come to a stage in your life now where you can help somebody and you might not get nothing in return, yeah. but you do it because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And it's just that continuation of that circle of good. Yeah. You know, and I think that that means a lot to me. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? And fingers, Abdul Hakim, he also means a lot to me, man. He's a, he's a, he's a solid guy as yeah. well. Um, anyway, I, I remember Shall the I first... Inshallah, you persuade him to get, come on the Maktabah. Yeah, Inshallah, we'll try to get done next week. You'll only come and you speak to him. <laughs> I've, I've invited him for lectures so many times. Serious. Yeah, no, but... Inshallah, we'll, we'll get him down. Your man. Shafa'a, when you come in, you get involved, and he's, he's on it. <laughs> he, um, I remember the first, I think it was like the first night. I was hot. The first night, I was yeah. homesick. I said, yeah. I want to go home. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. fun no more because I just wanted to be... In an environment that I liked, like they put me in, I think it's Al Wahda or Al Wahda, Al Wahda, Al Wahda to Thania, yeah. the second oldest building. Like Fingers was in the building 14. Yeah, it was a new building. Two to a room. Yeah. I had initially they, t- they tried to do six. Yeah. I said, no, I'm not staying. I got my laptop. I'm, I'm, I'm a Western privilege. Western privilege. Like, <laughs> so I'm not doing that, man. And there, there was not even no partitions. It was just yeah. like a bed. Yeah, and you um, have to pop it on curtain. Yeah, but there was nothing. In this yeah. one, there was nothing. And I'm like, no, I can't do this. Then I got um, upgraded to four to room. Yeah. Or something crazy like that. It's four to room when they had the partitions and, yeah. you know, it was makabool for the time. Yeah. But um, at that time, it was curtains. We put up on partition. But I, yeah, go on. I think they had these. They, they had the, they, they had they, the kind they, of the, 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 the metally yeah, type, type ones, I remember, yeah. And it, it was nice, man. But it was very challenging because it's like, if you can imagine... Which, which, which wihda was you in? It was an old one. I was just learning from it. The new one didn't exist at that okay, time. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, it was old. So if you remember? Uh, was, it was probably the same one, Thania. The cats and that we had yeah, to yeah, with the cats yeah. and then the hallway stuck. Yeah, we can speak about the cats, man. And Poor the, cats. the toilet. Come were... back in the skinny by the end of the term there. Bro, yeah. They're well fed. Yeah. Like I saw some crazy things happen <laughs> with the cats, poor. man. No, honestly, man. And you're by yourself and the cats are just going crazy. <laughs> They're going crazy in the jam I mean, you're like... Stuff on like the anyway, that's a, that's a story maybe for <laughs> off camera. Okay. Um I remember um the the yeah, so you can imagine the doors as you remember, big room, and then there was the AC in the corner. Yeah. And it's one AC that regulates the whole room. And I'm a man that I don't like because I got like sickle cell trait. Yeah. Can't get like the the cold gets into my bones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then there was other brothers from other parts of the world that they liked the AC. Yeah. It, was, it was not it's, a It was a beefing topic. Oh, the gosh. AC is a beefing topic. You've got people from different continents. Yeah. And there's different cultures as it pertains to AC. Yeah, was, Some has no AC at all. Yeah, yeah, Some yeah. has AC on full blast. Full blast. All night, the, day, all, all the time. time. <laughs> Even when you're sleeping. Yeah. So then like, sometimes you'd like try to, try to, but my Arabic was weak at the time. Yeah. And then sometimes you might just pluck up the courage to switch it off. Go back into your room, sit down. Somebody switched it back on again, and you're like, "This is this is not life." <laughs> <laughs> How did I get here, man? It's difficult. And then what I would do because I had a window on my side, I would just open up the window so the AC would come out, so it's, it's weaker. Yeah, That's yeah. Like, that was a little a little uh, in-house beefs inside the thing. And then you've got um, you know, I say stuff like that. It's like funny things or things that are not really funny, but it's like when you live with somebody, you really get to know them, right? <laughs> Yeah, so like imagine you're in a room, four to a room, and like midday, a man will just fart. Just fart, and you're like, 
<laughs> you don't want to go outside and do that. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, you don't want to do that in private. Or, to the toilet. Yeah, yeah. Like, just disappear for a minute, come back. No one's going to ask any questions. <laughs> you no know one's going to say, where did you go? You no one cares. Just like loud. Yeah. Nothing. One time fingers came to visit me and a guy would just, he just did a business. He was just like letting him off. Yeah. And I was just like, but this, is my, this is my exposure to... Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I'm so like? you're living in there. Wow, this is yeah. different, man. But anyway, man, that was just like yeah. tongue and cheek stuff. But um, yeah, it was it, eventually once you get settled in, I got my little moped, got yeah. my little internet, yeah. and uh, by the blessing of Allah, and again uh, after praising Allah, then Abdul Haq, he continued. He so he allowed me to work from Medina. Amazing on the computer because yeah. a lot of my work was computer based. Um, I was like a secretary at that stage. Yeah. And I was making like 700 UK pounds. Yeah, excellent. It's not a lot of money now. Yeah. Like, can you imagine from Medina? Yeah. On top of my 840, 700. Yeah, yeah. I'm not touching it. You're... It's going in my bank, my bank, yeah, my bank. Yeah. So, um, you're doing good. I, it was crushed yeah, 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 in the beginning. Good. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, it, was, it was really nice, man. But then, obviously, it gets a bit too much yeah. working, studying. And studying. It was too much, actually. Yeah. Missing your family. Yeah. Um, and then eventually, I got myself out of the, the dorms. Yeah. Got me uh, an apartment outside. And then shortly after, my, my wife my family came over. Yeah. yeah, I think that was a. I mean, everyone's different. Everyone's got their own kind of. Some people they're going to do it and they're not going to get married. Some people they yeah, need yeah. to be with their family, need to be married. Yeah. For me, I was in the dorm for about three months or six months, oh, and my wife came it. over. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. That was my dorm experience. After that, that was I was married at uni as well. So okay, my yeah, it was a case of bring my wife over yeah, and yeah. get back to normal. Was it easy those days though to bring your wife over? That's another story. Okay. Yeah, that's the whole story. That in those days, bringing your wife over was uh, coming over on Umrah, overstaying, overstaying and then you. dealing with it when you're leaving. There was a kind of, there was an unsaid rule yeah. that you're a student at the jam, you're not there, you're, you're there to study and to seek knowledge. So, yeah. you know, they'll accept that if you're a student at the jam type of thing. Mm. You're on your way out, you know, they look at you and say, okay, you know, if you've got a fine to pay, you pay it. If you haven't, so they'll let you go through. You did, but in the end, leave. no, she did. Because because uh, of the complications of uh, pregnancies and births because I said my first son was born with a uh, hole in the heart and other complications yeah, oh, uh, she, first yeah, boy, yeah? the first the very first one and then the, then Adam as well who's the Abdul Rahman Ibrahim and then Adam was the fifth one mm. um, fifth maybe numbers mm. they, get, they get plenty <laughs> isn't it but anyway yeah so because of that she had to go back home so I'd, but what happened was I think in the just bef- the first year of Kuliya uh, Alhamdulillah I went to Riyadh mm. and uh, applied directly yes, through, yeah, at that time, I think it was uh, Muhammad ibn Nayef, okay. Ali al if it's the same, yeah, he passed away. And I'll be honest with you, I went to Riyadh in the morning, not knowing if I'm going to get to see him or not. I didn't know what was going to happen. So I've gone there, drove down there first thing in the morning, someone said, just go and apply. I thought, by, I gone by myself Mad. on a, on a four-hour, six-hour drive. Yeah, seven. Uh, seven, yeah. yeah. I got there just in time for Fajr or just in time for when they opened up no. sat down in the musalla, waited till he came went in gave him my khitab he looked at it spoke to me once or t- a bit in English in English gave him salam salam straight at the jam blah 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 mm. and two, two weeks three weeks later I, I got mean, yeah I got the paper saying you got a visa I was so happy did you ever go back to him and say thank you I don't think I would have got to, I don't even know how I got in in the first place. Got you, got <laughs> it was one of those ones where you just yeah. go, because usually at the Shalom door, the security man. stops you. They're like, where are you going? Who are you? Mm. Oh, you're from Medina. Go back to Medina. It's not, mm. sometimes it's just one of those things. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? The timing's yeah. right. The, yeah. It's still fifth. It's, 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 it's what I mean. Life, yeah. So once she, once my wife was on that, that was it. Umrah, Hajj. It's fine now. It's fine now. Everything's, you can travel, you can do. You That's get what I mean? Life. So, alhamdulillah, you know, it was good. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, so yeah, I think it's, you know, like I said, everyone's different. Some people, they can study without yeah. being married. Some people need to mm. be married. So as a new student, for example, that's going to the jam, you know, if you're, if you're fine not being married, I wouldn't say get married. No, I wouldn't. If you're already say. married, then alhamdulillah, bring your wife over. Yeah, yeah. that's just a situation because I, I, I think we have to also know that it's not easy for the women. Yeah. Because remember, you're a student full time. Yeah. Mon- let's just say Monday to Friday, yeah. yeah. Whatever the, the coming, what the days were back then, um, and then you so you study from say seven to like Dhuhr. You come back at Dhuhr after Dhuhr, you might ch- sleep, eat, and then majority of the times you're coming back out from Maghrib to you know to in, be the in the Haram, or yeah. Dars. That's right. So the women are by themselves a lot, yeah. or with the kids, and there's yeah. not a lot of social interaction. And if they don't have any friends, it can yeah. be quite challenging. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um. I think that's something to to think about as well. Yeah. 
You know, it's just not everything. Okay, I'm going to be in Medina. It's going to be all rosy. No, it's not. It's not. Like it's, not. it's not like that. Yeah. Even, even, I guess now when you're out teaching in the evenings 100%, and the kids are yeah. at home in the evenings, well, yeah. you're not there, stuff yeah. like that. It Challenge continues. Me, okay, let's go to Kulia because yeah. I'm so happy that we've got another student graduate who went to Kulit al-Hadith. Alhamdulillah. Because everyone seems to go to Sharia now. Yeah, yeah. Or Tell us, or Dawa, yeah. And Hadith is difficult, challenging. It's one of the harder Kulias. Yeah, it's one of the ones where, obviously, you go there because you're, you know, you... I mean... What was your reasoning behind picking Hadith at yeah, the time? That's a great question. Um, at the time, what I saw from the students that preceded me, the strongest students that I saw, that, or that I deemed to be the strongest, um, in terms of their, their academia, went to Al-Hadith. Yeah. That's not to say that if you went Sharia or Da'wah or, or Lugha or Al-Quran, you were weak. Yeah. The majority were the strong students. And I just liked, I, I liked how they flex, how they, how they came across and stuff yeah. like that. And I was like, I want to be like that. Yeah, yeah. So again, it's the same mindset. All right, what did you do to get there? All right, I'm going to do the yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah. On top of that, on top of that, I did like... Um, I, I'm very, very interested to this day, learning more about the Prophet Alayhi Salaam, how we used to walk, how we used to talk, how yeah. we used to deal with his loved ones, how we used to deal with his wives, how we yeah. used to deal with his enemies. Yeah. I loved all of that. Yeah. You know, um, I wasn't prepared for what I was about to get into yeah. in terms of the the sheer amount of memorization that you had to do. It was, it was, I was way, out, way outside of my comfort yeah. zone. And, yeah. you know, many, many times, not many, but at least three or four times, I wanted to pack it in. Yeah. I wanted to pack it in, like, and give up. But Alhamdulillah, I didn't. I, I held yeah. on. I'll tell you a funny story, right? Uh, I was having an issue one time, like a, a family, like a, my missus, and I just don't know what it was, but I went to Tahir White. Yeah. And this is the, the benefit that I would love for the listeners and the viewers to, to take from this. Like, never underestimate the, the power of saying a good word to somebody. Yeah. Especially if you're in a, your position of influence and power. Yeah, yeah. Because Tahir, at that time, I think he was um, either a master's or a doctor or a student. Yeah. So he's, he's got status. He's been there for, uh, you know... He's been there for years. 20 years yeah, and a stuff long like time, that. Yeah. So the fact that he even gave me time, because it was just me and him. Yeah, yeah. I called him up. We linked in the masjid. Yeah. I said, I need to speak to you about something. And I, I was very transparent about my situation. And he said something to me which changed my whole concept of, no, I don't want to give up no more. Yeah, yeah. Because somebody that I look up to believes in me. Yeah, yeah. So I felt like, how can I not even believe in myself? Yeah, yeah. And when I ex ex expressed to him what the situation was, he was like, he shook his head like this, he was like, Akhi, you are not like other students. Remember, mm. I'm just trying to figure out life still, I'm trying yeah, to put yeah. things together. But he saw something in me yeah. and was like, no, don't, don't, don't leave because you're different. You're not like other students. Yeah, yeah. And that was all I needed to hear yeah, yeah. for me to say, you know what? I'm fastening up my laces again. I'm tightening up my belt and I'm going to deal with whatever, whatever um, situation I had to deal with. Yeah. And now to this day, where some people may consider me to be in a, as a, in a, in a position of influence because I yeah. used to be the imam or, yeah. you know, I've got a business or whatever, yeah. whatever or graduate. Yeah. I always try to remember when I didn't feel worthy or when I didn't believe in myself, yeah. somebody else believed in yeah, me. Yeah. And I will always be an advocate of giving opportunities to those people that ordinarily wouldn't have received an opportunity. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all about that. Yeah. Um, we had a sister that applied for an interview the other day. Yeah. And you know, sometimes in an interview, you just think, for me, we're just a relatively new company. We're just trying to be professional. Yeah, yeah. For and this is for Meso Academy. It's for, for the, Little Meso Academy. For Little Meso Academy, which is the, the madrasa, madrasa for on Arabic the for, on the weekend. Okay, go ahead. But from her point of view, I'm being interviewed for a job. Yeah, yeah. Can you see the different yeah. dynamics? Yeah, for me, yeah. I'm just trying to be professional. Yeah. For her, she's like, <laughs> oh, I, I don't want to mess up. Actually, she couldn't answer any questions. Oh, uh, uh, i We hired her. Yeah. Why? Because we saw something in her. Yeah. And we wanted to give her an opportunity. And for me, yeah. that's what little me. That's what I want my legacy to yeah, be about. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. As long as I said, as we mentioned before, we started rolling live. As long as I can see passion yeah, in yeah. somebody, yeah. that's all I need. Yeah. And I'll, I'll be your biggest supporter. Yeah, I'll yeah. be your biggest supporter, man. So yeah. um, I think you can't underestimate a good word. I mean, the uh, is isn't it as well? There's the fact that's part of our dean. Yeah, yeah. Part of our dean yeah, is yeah. to m motivate people and to yeah. encourage them. Yeah, yeah. Not to kind of put them down. If it's not even allowed to. 
criticise them or to nitpick or to put yeah. them down or to find flaws yeah. and stuff like that. You know the story about um, how Imam al-Bukhari wrote his Sahih? Mm. Do you remember it? No. It was, um, as I remember, he was with his sheikh, and at the time... See, was... that's why you got hadith, so you can remember <laughs> these things. You got fiqh, shari, you might, you might remember something else about Imam Ahmed, about Imam... There you go. No, the reason why this stood out to me, two stories I'll give you. Yeah. Uh, the reason why it stood out to me, because it goes to show the importance of al-kalimat uh, al yeah. a good word, right? So Imam al-Bukhari, at the time, he was studying with his sheikh, and there was a hadith written down in kutub, but there wasn't any one book that had all of the sahih a hadith of Rasulullah alayhi salatu yeah. salam. So his sheikh, I don't know who it was, um, he said words to the effect, if only somebody would gather this is recently. he could have been saying it out loud you know like a, he's given a lesson he'd be like if only somebody would gather all of the, ah, the authentic hadith of rasulullah alayhi salatu salam and put it in one book and then imam al-bukhari said words to the effect waqa'at al-kalima fi 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 al-qalb aw kama qala and 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 he became imam al-bukhari yeah and there's another imam i forget his name man he wrote um sirat al-a'lam al-nubala who's yeah, it from the Al-Dhahabi. I believe yeah. it was Al-Dhahabi. Yeah. I could be wrong, but it was a great imam like that. Yeah. That somebody came and saw his, his handwriting. Before he became Imam Al-Dhahabi, let's just say yeah. it's, it's him, right? Before he became the imam he became, somebody saw his handwriting and said, you got the handwriting of the scholars. And that encouraged him to become who he yeah. became. Yeah. So for me, that's, it's, 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 I've seen the effect in my own life. And I love to do that in other people. Yeah, yeah. But I don't like to be like um, facetious and give people false hopes. Yeah, like yeah. if I see somebody, I'm not going to yeah. give them, you know what I'm saying? But if I do see something, and I will always be an advocate to say like, you know what, I see so much potential in you. Because yeah. you never know what that person is going to become in the future. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I definitely like to share that with your, your audience. Uh, another, I think, benefit of... Just you being in the Jamia, mm. which I think loads of people benefit benefited from, mm. is when uh, Abu Bakr from Spot Road Project, Sartre, but at that time it was Roadside to Islam, Road and the preserve him and bless him and keep him doing the good that he's doing. Alhamdulillah. Uh, he visited the Umrah yeah, yeah. and interviewed you and Abdul Hakim. Hakim. Yeah. And what was, so that video, what is that video about? Tell us a quick, how yeah, that happened. Very quickly, and, yeah. Yeah. So I remember before, I think before, when I knew I was going to go, and I was like, Akhi man, we've got accepted, blah, 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 blah. And he told me that he's coming. I said, Akhi, we should do a tour. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I bet, no problem. Yeah. So then we it's not been done before at that time. There was nothing on YouTube. Or if there was, it wasn't there was much. one video of somebody reciting Quran. Yeah, yeah. Just one video. So he's like, yeah, cool. All right. He came over and then the rest is history, man. Like. Like, walk, you walk, walking around the jammy, looking all. Walking around you know. the jammy, we, 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 I showed him my room yeah. where I was living at, showed him the bakala, showed him. You know, you look like South London, isn't that? Typical, look, typical look, South yeah, African. What I remember, can you remember? I can, <laughs> can imagine with <laughs> that. Typical with, uh, South London. <laughs> did you see it? Yeah, <laughs> subhanAllah, man. Like, yeah, they're from South London, like I tell. Yeah. You, know, you know, as well, Abdul, uh, sorry, Abu Bakr, he came with other brothers as well from, yeah. from the ends. Yeah, yeah. So it was like a bunch of just you know, black brothers just walking around Medina and. Um, it was it was beautiful. But it was an amazing video. That was video. Yeah, was... because people benefit. People didn't hadn't had an insight into what it's like Ever. walking around the jammy before that time. And you know so what? again, it was a first. Yeah. I would be walking in Medina, in Medina, and I get like if I go to KFC, the person behind KFC yeah. has recognised me. I would when I come back to the UK. I mean, so it's, it's inevitable. People yeah. recognise you. And that was early days of vlogging on YouTube. So that wasn't yeah, even. So we're the, we're the OGs in this yeah, yeah, game, yeah, in this. man. People even back then, the funny thing. The funny thing is as well. Back then, I remember when I was over my eye, just having a camera. You, you looked suspicious. Weird, yeah. You know, we got a camera for walking off the camera. Yeah. We take photos for us. Like, yeah. You know, you're from England. Are you spy? You know, are you, mm. are you really a Muslim? <laughs> <laughs> I think so, yeah. Abu Bakr as well because he had the um, that push from Rosa to Islam. Yeah. He attracted a big audience as yeah. well. It's not as yeah. if we just done it and then put it out. No, that's right. He already had yeah, that yeah, thing yeah. going, and it was yeah. growing like oh, yeah. fire. Yeah. That that um, revert revert stories. stories yeah. yeah, and um, some brothers and this is like he the, coined that as well. Up to now, everyone's you know. Well, it's like the Dino. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They keep Everyone just play on the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. It's you know, Dino for Dunya. Yeah. <laughs> it all comes from Rota to Islam, really. Right yeah, anyway, I'm blessed, man. He's, he's no. a good brother, solid yeah, man, doing great he's work, man. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say some brothers ended up applying for the university after seeing that. Yeah. Coming to the university, seeing it and coming up and saying, your video, obviously after a lot, is what made me want to apply. Yeah. That there brings an indescribable amount of joy. Yeah. The issue is now, I just pray that we were sincere at the time. Yeah. Because that's a khasara, man. <laughs> I'm not here, that's a khasara. If we weren't sincere, I'm yeah. talking because... Of course. What is yeah. the benefit of any action without sincerity? Yeah. We were young, you know, I hope we were... Like I was married anyway. I yeah. speak about for myself. I wasn't looking for love. <laughs> he was looking, like, like, like looking for fame. There was, a, there was no fame attached. I mean, I can just I, I, I can only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, um, if there was any, you know, yeah. deficiencies in the intention to, to, to forgive us. But um, I would Allah. like to think that we're sincere because there's a lot of khair that came from it. Yeah. But what's the benefit if it wasn't accepted? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Of course. But like I said, we were young. We were still trying to figure things out. Man. Yeah, yeah. We were still in the Mahad at that time. It was, yeah, it was very early days of, yeah. of the Jami before you went to the Kuliya. Yeah. I did Hadith. Would you believe that we got stick from doing that from some brothers? Yeah, why are you trying to seek? Not even that. What? It was it was, it was was the affiliation with Roadside to Islam. That was my first exposure. I mean, like, like to yeah, yeah go ahead, go ahead. That was my first exposure to... I mean, I knew about it. Yeah. But it's my first exposure to... You're guilty by association. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? But Abu, Abu Bakr was my friend. Yeah, yeah. He's my friend. Like, it wasn't just somebody that we, I just linked up to do a tour yeah. thing with. Yeah. So, um, not know. to mention, not to mention, everything he's done has been positive and, in the community and benefiting and see where he is the community. Now. Yeah. See where he is now. And Come on, man. He's, he's, not, he's not up there giving lectures or teaching the dean. He's benefiting people. Not only that, you can yeah. see the fruits of his, of his actions, actions yeah. now. Yeah. And the guys that were, you know, trying to put pressure on us. Yeah. In Anton, yeah. with all due respect, where yeah. are you at? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. What have you done to change the lives of people other than your immediate family? Yeah. yeah. Where's your legacy that you're trying to build? Yeah. You know, so um, that was my first. And yeah, there's know, a hadith: we have the best of people, are the ones that's most beneficial to other people. To the people and yeah. Nas, huh? Yeah. yeah. And Kama yeah. Qadana, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that was that was that was interesting. Yeah. That was interesting. So yeah, to, I know there's some stories. We won't go down that road. What's that? What's that one? The stories of the. the... I can, I'll speak about anything uh, you want to speak about. We'll as, long leave as, that... as long as you're happy to speak yeah. about it, I don't mind actually. Yeah. So there was that. There was a couple of incidents where you've, you you almost, you know, came because of this type of negative. I'm going to call it a toxic environment mm -hmm. because there are young students that are going there now mm -hmm. and it's possibly going to get caught up in the same type of, 100%. you know, environment. And and when I say it's toxic, it's toxic in the sense that if you listen to what the mashaykh and the scholars say, mm -hmm. they always have the same advice. Concentrate on seeking oh, not beneficial knowledge Trust and stay away from qila wa qala. No one says it. anything different. Not That's one scholar it. will say anything different. No. Yet... We still find get sucked in. Get sucked in. Yeah, it's yeah. almost become like, okay, where are you from? Okay, you're from there. Yeah. That means you're with those people. Yeah. That means you're not clear on this. That means yeah. you have a question mark and stuff 100%. like that. And I'm, I guess that happened a bit too. No, it was like, yeah. can, can we can speak? Because I don't think I've spoken about this, but I don't, I don't mind. I'm good. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm easy. I feel like Sunday morning, I'll talk about it if you want. Yeah, I'm, obviously. Yeah, go, I mean, go ahead if you want. If you're comfortable yeah, speaking about it, no, let's talk about that aspect because it's something which comes up, and people need to be aware of the kind of mentality and some of the man. the negative. Even if a person's intention is correct, the the, the outcome shows you the the result, the yeah, negative. You yeah. know. So go, go ahead. What I will say, all right. I'm going to be fair and just because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves being fair and just. My experience, right, with the brothers that I ended up falling out with yeah. wasn't all bad. Yeah. As people, like I was just chilling right now, they were nice people. Yeah. Crack joke, you know, um, come pick me up from my house, take me to school, drive me around, take me to find a place to stay. Not everything's bad. It's like, I think it will be uh, um, an in, I always have a problem saying accurate, accurate inaccurate depiction of them to say, oh, these guys are just it. Because it wasn't all like that. Because if it was, I would never have been around them in the in beginning. In the first place, yeah, you know that was saying? good stuff, yeah. It's just when it comes to certain things, then there's an issue. Yeah. You know, the issue of, oh, which message did you attend? Which mashaykh do you listen to? Yeah. And stuff of this nature. So um, in the early days, it was like a family. They would come, link, everything was fine. When things started to go left for lack of a better word or expression is when um 
uh, Abdul Hakim Fingers, he was very vocal in the beginning. Mm. He's from Brixton. I'm from Lewisham. Mm. I became like I was adopted by Brixton. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My wife from Balham, so I moved it's into the area. Enough, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he's Brixton. Brixton born and bred. You know what I'm saying? So he was a bit more like if somebody was speaking about Brixton Masjid. Yeah. Whereas I might just listen, he yeah. would be vocal and speak. Yeah. And that didn't pay off well for him because, yeah. you know, gossip, travels yeah. and stuff like that. Then he got known as the person that, for example, you dafir and Faisal Jassin, yeah. Sheikh Faisal Jassin. Yeah. They, they tried to stop the, the brothers in the maktaba going to the Caribou Center. Okay, yeah, yeah. Caribou, the right next door Caribou, to the masjid. Brixton Masjid, Caribou it's Center. Literally you two know doors what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, you yeah. two are not seeing eye to eye. Why, Why would, would you, you even there? want to be right there? Like, yeah. What was the fruit? What do you what did, what was you intending to happen? What yeah. good, sorry? What do, yeah. You know, that like the overweighing good I'm talking yeah, about. There yeah. would have been benefit, but so anyway, fingers was vocal. He got caught up and like they I remember it like it was yesterday, Aki. The brother in particular, I won't say his name, it's not yeah. important. Yeah. But he went in on him. Yeah. So when I say in, remember, we're still Mahad students of so at the very most, first year Kulia. He went in on him so badly, Akhi, and this is one of the ramifications of that dawah, when you're just too rough and tough and mean and stuff. He went in on him, and I hope Abdul Hakim don't mind me saying this, but when we left that jalsa that's sitting in Al Kawi's, which is a restaurant, if you remember, at the, oh, the top of the jam, at the top of the jam, at the Bab al Khalfi, right? Yeah, yeah. at the top. Yeah. He left that um, student spot. There. Yeah. He was there after Isha. Yeah. He left that uh, thing, and I felt, because I tried to stop the brother. Yeah. When he when I heard him how he was going in because he's my friend yeah yeah and you're my friend and you're my friend and you're just talking to my other friend like he's a piece of crap yeah every time I say ah no 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 he say ah, stick, stick a pin in it stick a pin in yeah. it and he would go in we left the jalsa went home I had to get out of the car to get something on my moped yeah because he dropped fingers off yeah he just insulted him and it, yeah. ripped him and then dropped him home yeah <laughs> like what kind of um, Mental uh, abuse is that. If you're going to assault someone, uh, uh, not, not in an Islamic context, yeah, right? If you're going to um, abuse somebody, yeah. let's fight now. Yeah, yeah. Not abuse, and then I drop you home. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Tell me to Conf- walk home on this yeah, or something like that after what you just said to me yeah, yeah. and how you spoke. Fingers got out of the car, and I got out of the car. Four of us, yeah? They t- two stayed in, two of us came out. And I'm like, bro. I'm so sorry. Mm. I did not know that was going to happen. And he was just like, he was, he was like shocked. He's flat. Yeah. couldn't believe what just happened. So I left him, said, I'll him. Got in the car, said to the brother, I think what you did there, bro, was wrong. Mm. He dropped me to home. My house was about 10 minutes away. Fingers called me. He said, bro, that guy made me feel like a kafir. And he was emotional. Mm. And that just goes, that's the first thing. That's, the, that's my first like exposure to proper beefing about these issues that now you've emotionally hurt somebody now mm, this mm. is more than saying that you're wrong yeah yeah, yeah. it's not a disagreement on yeah, the issue yeah yeah it's next level yeah you've hurt somebody's feelings and what happened from that that was my thing like i'm not feel, like even if you're cool i'm not feeling that side of your character yeah, yeah. and you ain't doing that to me because yeah. now i know what you're capable of i'm going to be prepared it was yeah. that fingers was the the sacrificial animal yeah. unfortunately and we're not normally confrontational people, really laid back, calm people. But um, that was a mistake from him. Yeah. Because now I know what you're. You, yeah, yeah. What, 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 what you. Yeah. What you're capable. Yeah, I know how you're... to deal with you now. And then what happened was, um, without making it too long, there was so many incidences that I can't even begin to um, mention now. Yeah, yeah. But one of the biggest incidences that I don't think I've ever spoken about publicly was, do you remember the war in Yemen? Yeah, yeah. When the Maj was getting massacred, yeah, yeah. students getting yeah, killed. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Sheikh Yahya Al-Hujuri, yeah. he managed to get out yeah. by Allah's grace and he came to Medina. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I'm in Medina at this stage. Yeah. This is the thick of the... Yeah. Well, no, not he the... got out. They, they, they actually... the. They interceded the legend and stuff like that. Oh, so some of the mashaykh and stuff like that. Yeah, they, to they, get him out. To let him in, yeah. To let him in, to give him a visa, to give him... They, okay, they actually karma facilitated, stuff. for giving him a karma, facilitate, because they recognised... The majlis recognised. It okay. was recognised as a university almost, you okay. know what I mean? Look by the mashaykh. So there was look, intercession in, included in that. Look at that. So yeah. that's an, even another story. Yeah. But if you're, if you're going to diss, 
if you're gonna give us a hard time. Yeah. We ain't let him in the country. Yeah, we ain't yeah. give him no iqama. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that's right. Facilitate. So anyway, um, we're in the haram yeah. now. Our Prophet's masjid. And we had to link Dhul Fiqah. Yeah. Never forget it because he was going to open up an online institute. Yeah, yeah. So me and Fingers are there. And where Sheikh Abdul Muhsin was giving a dars, but we were sitting a little bit away from it. Because we was really waiting for the after Isha so we can have the meeting. And then I think it was Blackberry Messenger at the time. Yeah. The messages going around. Sheikh Yahya is in Sheikh Abdul Muhsin's dars. I have not been, admittedly, um, like a huge Sheikh Yahya fan or student. Yeah, yeah. I heard of him. I think mean, maybe got one. I had one book at the time. But what I was taken aback by is that you've just come out of a war. I know for me, one of his children passed away in that war. Yeah. Untold students. I just wanted to see who is this guy that I've heard so much about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then um, I stand up. I literally walk over. Because you know the in, in, yeah. in the Haram you've got the carpet and then you've yeah. got the bit where you get the the, 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 the zam, zam, zam zam and then yeah. you get the next carpet. Yeah, yeah. So I'm on this side. I just okay, literally walk over. over. Yeah. And then I'm just trying to see. You know, yeah. He looks Yemeni. Yeah. He looks Yemeni. Yeah. And I see this guy. For 10 minutes I'm looking at this guy. It's the yeah. wrong guy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's mad. It's like. But when I saw him, I'm like, oh, so you are. Sure, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then when I realised who it was, I think it. Oh, okay, cool. All right, so it's you. <laughs> You don't look like how I thought. Like you yeah, don't yeah. even flex. Like, you're not wearing. Um, he wasn't wearing the Saudi type vibe. Yeah, yeah. Not that he would. Yeah. Whether he's Yemeni, he had the Yemeni vibe yeah. going on. I think he might have had the waistcoat. Yeah, yeah. And he just looked normal. Yeah, like, yeah. You would walk past this guy yeah. in the street, not yeah. even look twice at him. Yeah. So then when I saw it, yeah, I saw him, and then you could see like, he was mad. You could see the students coming, yeah. coming, coming yeah. until the place was packed. Yeah. So yeah, he's a powerhouse. Powerhouse, has been, I think. Yeah. So then, as, it, as they, they called the Iqama now, I stood up and everybody went, myself included, yeah. Yeah, everybody went to salamin. Yeah, yeah. So I got my little salamin and whatnot. And then um, we prayed. It was ram. Yeah. It was ram jam. Then obviously, as you know, they always, you know, majority of the time, they pray the janazah salah. Yeah. My, say, say the qibla is this way. My janazah salah was like this. <laughs> that's how packed that, it is. That's how packed it was. I couldn't even, I think I had my book in my hand and yeah, you got your yeah. slippers and everything like that. And then it was mayhem. Yeah. I'm not even like it's what it's been maybe like seven years since I'm not going to exaggerate. Me, yeah, love for the sheikh. Yeah, yeah. love for the sheikh, and um, I was just caught up in the moment. Like yeah. I was like, what is going on? Yeah, yeah. So as the sheikh was leaving the the masjid, everyone's following. So yeah. I'm just with <laughs> the crowd following. is following. Yeah. I think I actually left my shoes in the in the harem. <laughs> we ended up going to see where he's at because we're thinking, like, maybe we can get a little sit in with the sheikh, yeah, yeah. right? So we go to the hotel that he's at. Yeah. We see where the lifts go in, like lifts say he went to floor yeah. 13. We get to floor 13, and there's loads of Yemenis outside. Yeah, yeah. And like people that he's with saying that no one can come in. Yeah. And then we try to sneak in the cupboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe I shouldn't say that, but... but no, um, no, no, this is the standard. Someone this is my is, history, man. Yeah, yeah, this of is course. my history. This it's is what normal. happened. Yeah, I'll yeah. be lying about it, you know what I'm saying? We yeah. tried to stay in the cupboard. That's love for the mashaykh and love for knowledge. That's it. Yeah. Um, but... Cut long story short, we were unsuccessful yeah. in, our, in, our, in our mission. <laughs> the mission flopped. But we, we still had a lot of hope. We were like, no worries. So can you imagine? We had that mad experience. We're walking downstairs now. I got no shoes on because I left my shoes in the harem on one of those yeah. things. Um, we come out and um, as we get to the bottom of the hotel, who do we see? Sheikh Fawzan, the Mudir of the Jamia. And we're thinking, a key they are going to visit. Yeah, yeah. visit. And we want to get back in there again. Yeah. But I say, no, this is long, it's late. Yeah. So we go home. I get my stuff, I get in my gym. So I got my gyms now. Yeah, yeah. And I'm driving home. As yeah. I'm driving home, Achi, what I'm about to tell you right now was my biggest lesson in people. Yeah. People. Uh, WhatsApp was around now. No, it was WhatsApp. Definitely WhatsApp was around. I was in the Brixton Masjid. What's that group? Yeah. So I'm driving. As you can imagine, I'm, the adrenaline's still pumping. Yeah, my yeah. feet are still hot. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I'm driving and I'm, I'm, I'm messaging the group and I, I send a voice note. Yeah. So I send a voice note and I said words to the effect of, hey guys, man, it's a beautiful day today or even in today. You never guess what happened. And I basically narrated what I just told you guys. Yeah, very, yeah. You know, very in a concise fashion. And then I said, guys, it was crazy. It was book to book foot to foot, shoulder to shoulder, and I was trying to tell them how rum it was. And at the time, without much thinking, 
I'm not sitting in front of a computer with my tea and biscuits and I've got time to compose myself to yeah. think, how do I want to express myself? I just was speaking. I said, guys, you know, I'm excited. The best way I can describe it is, is that like when you're making tawaf around the Kaaba? That's yeah. how packed it was. Facts. Yeah. That's how packed it was. It yeah, was fact. Yeah, yeah. I gave a similarly. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, to show how packed it to was. To show how not nothing to do with not people's. To make yeah, not to make comparison. That's what people you know what don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's so right. Check this, Echi, right? People want to read what they want to read into it. I said when it when they want to. Yeah. And as Allah is my witness, when I said, um, and as I said, it's, it's like when you're making, it's like it's as packed as Umar or Hajj when you're making tawaf around the Kaaba. Yeah. And then I said, and I can see what I'm about to say now is going to be ambiguous. I said. I don't say that to compare, um, I need to double check, but in my heart, this is what I intended. I don't say that to compare, I said, I, I, I used the word idol. Yeah. But what I intended is like, you know, people like Jay-Z is considered to be an idol. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, somebody that's famous Yeah, love nowadays. of the scholars. Love of, love of the scholars is a part of Ibadah. I love for the element they carry. People need to understand there's a yeah, principle I, I mentioned. What I, was yeah. trying, I wasn't trying to compare him to an idol. Yeah. But how I expressed my myself... Was ambiguous. Because maybe we shouldn't be running after no man like that. Yeah. Maybe it was a bit OTT. Yeah. But it wasn't OTT when I was worshipping him. Yeah. Um, but my words were ambiguous and it came across as if I said that the Kaaba was an idol. Oh, okay. All right? That's but, how it, but remember, yeah. it's, 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 um, it's controlled. It's in the, the WhatsApp group. Yeah, yeah. If this gets out, yeah. somebody has sent it out, right? True yeah. or false? Yeah. It's a group. You can yeah, only yeah. be in a group if you're accepted. So then um, that was the end of it for me. Yeah. That was the end of it for me. And then I remember one day, you know, the sheikh in Brixton, yeah. Abdul Zahir. Yeah. And you know what I'm talking I about? I know what you're talking about, yeah. His son yeah, yeah. studied in. Yeah. yeah. He messages me one day, right? And he said, it's the first time I ever heard this ibarah. And again, yeah. it, 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 it kind of traumatized me. Because I've never heard this verb, awqa'ta. Yeah. I've heard waqa'a before. Yeah. Like in awqa'ta, he said, awqa'ta nafsaka fi, fi mahalak. Yeah. So I'm reading this and I'm thinking, what does that mean, awqa'ta Yeah. And then he had a link, but I didn't click the link for a little while. Yeah. So I put the phone down, then later on, I clicked the link. My world came tumbling down. That was a message? No. Oh. It was a refutation. Yeah. PDF. PDF, uh, it, it, or PDF whatever, yeah. or... Whatever, the document. It wasn't yeah. recorded, it was written, basically. It was written. Type, yeah. With my audio attached to the link yeah. on that whatever whatever website I went to, PDF or sorry a refutation with my audio, um, and the title something like, you know, I think they, they connected me to Brixton perhaps, uh, or foolish boy or whatever yeah. goes into extremes. In, with his love for al you know, they just, yeah, at that point they, he'd been refuted by some, refuted, by some people. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's not even me getting into did he deserve to be refuted or not. Just, yeah, like, just, let's just one put one side. side. Yeah, yeah. You know, the typical take away the sheikh, take away your first name, let's just call you by your surname yeah, yeah. to diminish your status. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, every Talib's nightmare. Yeah. I've been refuted. Like, you hear yeah. about it happening to yeah, yeah. Abu Usama, or this person, Bilal that, Phillips, yeah. even Abdul Haq Baker got yeah. he's, had, he's had his fair share. And now it was me. And it was like, okay. He hasn't mentioned my name. It was a yeah. um, guy from Birmingham. Okay. Abu Iyad. Okay. Yeah, he mentioned my name. He's just put my audio up. And I'm like, if you know my voice, you know my voice. If you don't, you don't. I yeah, can live yeah. with that. It wasn't yeah. that bad. But I was still upset. I'm like, bro, you couldn't reach out to me. You couldn't yeah. come and tell me that uh, what you said was a bit ambiguous. Yeah, put correct something it. Out. Put something out. Do make you know, a bayan. Do, do, do you know yeah, yeah, correct it or whatever. Give yeah. me an opportunity to fix my my mistake, something that you deem as a mistake. Don't slaughter me. Yeah. Don't slaughter me because you don't know how that's going to affect me. Yeah. You don't know how that's going to affect my family. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? And what's your intention for correcting? Is it to hurt me or is it to, is it for me to come back to what you deem to be the truth? Yeah. It yeah. just it was a bit of tanaqud for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I just wasn't feeling it at all. And I was like, all right. And then the boy cut inside yeah. from the people that I used to yeah. hang with. Yeah. That was hard. Yeah. And then on top of that, Akhi, I remember my wife fainted at work one day. Yeah. I said to the Sheikh, uh, Sheikh, I'm going to go out of the fossil because I'm going to go out of the fossil. He's like, no, but I'm going to I left. I took my wife. So I didn't even take her. I, I drove to her workplace. She was in the ambulance. I was behind the ambulance mm. until we got to the hospital. 
So I'm in the, I'm outside now because these women I can't yeah. go in the hospital. Like I'm waiting, and then this is the time I used to be on Twitter. I had to get rid of that man, and I had to stop following those brothers that were known for the refutations because it just made me always miserable. Every time you open up your your phone, you see a refutation. Yeah. And I'm not saying refutations are bad. Refutations are not bad. Refutations have their their place in the religion, but if it's if it seems like it's all that you do, if yeah. it seems, then it's just like it just makes you feel sad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, for me anyway, and I don't want. I don't not like... to mention a lot of these refutations. They're not. They're not scholarly refutations. Exactly. A lot of them are qila waqal and a bit of kind of like mockery and slander, putting people yeah. down. It's not. It's a refutation. It's a refutation like Sheikh Abdul Muslim Abad when he refutes his ilmi, like when yes. Sheikh Al Albani refutes his ilmi. When Sheikh, yeah. it's based upon you know even Sheikh Rabi when he refutes in the, the ones before it was ilmi and stuff like that. It's based upon. A, a point that the person says, a valid criticism, broken down with yeah. knowledge, with adab, with etiquette. Oh, that's gosh. important. And yeah, because you want the person to correct themselves and come back. That's the maqsul. You don't. You're not. Your your intention isn't to, especially you're talking about write the a, person off. Yeah, the ahlus or jamaat, the salafi. I've, it's not to. I've, I've yeah. seen refutations by Sunni scholars refuting people that might not be Sunni, but they still refer to them as sheikh. Yeah, they still adab and stuff. Like the that. Adab. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. So anyway, Twitter. Um, I saw a, a post from Abu Khadija. Yeah. Abu Khadija. Yeah. Famous Abu Khadija. And you know what he said? This is what he, he definitely said it. Foolish youth, maybe from Brixton, goes into extremes for a And I'm like, yeah. And everyone's everyone's sending me this. Yeah. yeah. I'm putting pressure on me. Like, so you you became public. I became a oh, public. You became a public became, refuted. That's it. Yeah. That's it. The, the, the bullseye. Is on my like they they they're ready for, they're coming for me now and I couldn't understand it because I'm nobody I still yeah. am nobody but yeah. I was even more of a nobody. It wasn't that though. The 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 hadef was at that time would have been Sheikh Yahya because yeah. he now was the target of refutation because he'd also spoken about yeah, but... them as well. So you as a wasila like, when you think about it properly yeah. to get to that to show why Hajru is off but also not just him Brixton. they got two in one. <laughs> Two and one, two and one, two and one, two and one. Take up Brixton as well. You got some tafid right there, got some discount, right? Because I, I had yeah. a connection to Brixton. Yeah. I had a connection to Brixton. And I was like, no, I didn't sign up for all of this, man. And I tell you, it, it, I had problems sleeping. Yeah, it's still, I had yes, problems yeah. praying. Yeah. Yeah. I had problems that in it, I was, I was right at home yeah. with my wife and my kids. And I'm like, this is so wrong on so many levels. So check this, right? And the reason why I'm about to say what I'm about to say is from a lot only. Because think about this, I was refuted. Yeah. Every Sunni Salafi would have probably, whether you agree with S pubs or you don't, you would have read that refutation, right? I read yeah. it about twelve times. Yeah. I can't believe it. You I don't read. follow what they say when you know don't read bad press about yourself. I didn't even know <laughs> that, man. But I just, I, I just couldn't believe it. I felt yeah. like I was in a twilight zone. So I'm reading this thing, right? And it was like I see something. I'm like, no, 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 he didn't say that. And then I just keep reading, reading, reading. Then one time, like days later, you know, I messaged in the group. I was like, guys, um, Abu Yad says this in his refutation, right? You think I should, because I was going to write a reply. You think I should reply to it? I was like, nobody saw it. Nobody saw it but me. And it was like, thousand percent. So I was like, all right, cool. So I wrote it. Initially, I wrote my reply response in Arabic. And it wasn't to be mutakabbir. Yeah. My thing was, like, I'm getting so much stick from people that I know don't even, can't even speak Arabic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't even read my reply, don't talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? That's how yeah. I was thinking at the time. Yeah. Maybe a bit ignorant, but that's how I was thinking. Yeah. And somebody's like, why are you going to write in Arabic? Because the maqsood is for people to read it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> good point. I, you got me on that one. <laughs> so then I translated it. Um, I obviously had my... People that were close to me that I trust, and I would say, Look, this is what I'm saying, it, yeah. and whatnot. And then, what was the straw that broke the camel's back, right? Was um, for Abu Yad now. He is the, dare I say it, at that time anyway, the master of refutations. May Allah bless him and give him good and forgive him for his mistakes. Yeah. He, re- he mentioned in the refutation about me. Remember, they're, they're accusing me basically of comparing the Kaaba to an idol. Yeah, yeah. And he's talking, and he's like, he makes the statement, and worship of, he's talking about the Kaaba, the context was the Kaaba. Yeah. And worship of it doesn't render it an idol. That's what he said. Yeah. 
And they might don't fuck you. But we don't worship the Kaaba. We make tawaf around the Kaaba. Ibadatan lillahi tabarak wa ta'ala. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Iqtida at Rasulillah alayhi salatu wa salam. We yeah. don't worship no Muslim in the right mind. Yeah, worship the Kaaba. You can go to somebody yeah. in five That's what the Muslim says. I don't even think that the non well, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's, what, say, that's what they try to say. They try to say you worship a stone, yeah. 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 So then, um, so when I refuted him, I said to myself, or when I replied, shall I say, I said to myself, 100% this is going to get to him. Yeah. It can't. Cause this is what you said. Yeah. And how I, how I flex, I copy paste. Yeah. I copy paste exactly what you said. I might even have screenshotted it. And I, it was a beautiful reply. Yeah. Like proper beautiful. And I made it like, I made like, um, you know, well what, yeah, you know, in Word when you can click that button to make it bold a little bit and come off the paper a bit <laughs> like that. Yeah, I was, I, I done all of that. And then I ended it with, May Allah cause us to, and I, I wasn't being facetious, I was being dead serious, enter paradise holding hands, because I don't want to beef with anybody. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to beef with anybody. Lo and behold, he was forced to speak about it and say it was a slip of the tongue. I was like, oh, oh I'm sorry. So I'm not allowed to have a slip of the tongue when I'm excited and I'm driving and I'm talking on the phone and it's like late this, at night. And it's late at night. And lots just happens. And it, it, yeah. But you maybe were sitting in front of your, your, your computer with your, 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 your tea and biscuits and stuff like that you had a chance to read what you wrote i never yeah, yeah. do you know what i'm saying there was a voice note wasn't even typed it was a voice note and that's completely typed. different to typed and 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 yeah. i didn't send my voice note out to the world i sent it out to a group of people that maybe like 25 people yeah that's there. somebody they could have corrected you and it could have ended there you could have ended yeah. there but it's like you have done this with the intention of spreading yeah. out yet you made the mistake yeah. but i never said that oh you say that we worship the car but i said yeah. I know you don't believe that. Yeah. But what would I be like now for me to say that this is what you believe? Yeah. I'd be a, I'd be a wrong one. In my heart, I don't believe that he thinks because I shit it. Yeah, yeah. But why would I put that out there to say, oh, um, S Pub's chief refuter says that you we can worship? I wouldn't do that because yeah. I think that's just evil. That's yeah. my opinion. Yeah. But I still will pull well, it's not, you. It's not just. I pull, yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah, it's not just. Yeah, I'll pull just. you up about it though. Because yeah. You've pulled me up about yeah. my mistake. Now I'm going to pull you up about your mistake. And that there put a target on my back now because I went against the machine. Yeah, yeah. And I beat him. Yeah. Not that I was trying to do that, yeah. but... This, it, it was, yeah, alhamdulillah. Like you it said, was, it's from Allah. It was from, that he made that slip in the and, first and place. No, yeah. And nobody else and picked to, it up. Yeah. So anyway, putting that to one side now, um, like life got difficult after that. Trust yeah. me, man. Hey, very <laughs> difficult. Yeah, um, of course. But uh, I was a bit limited what you was going to say. So no, it's coming, it's coming. The brothers that sent it out. So yeah. now I'm still. It's a mystery. So now I don't really trust people. I'm thinking, yeah. you know that people that feel this way about Sheikh Yahya. What? What? How did the message even get to anybody down that side of the town? Yeah. And then brothers reached out to me. I won't say who they are, mm. but two brothers that you definitely know. Yeah. Good brothers, man. Yeah. They reached out to me, and I was, I was like, Achi, I just need to tell you. I was one of the ones that sent that out and I apologised and, and I accepted the apology. Um, my wife didn't. Yeah. She was salty, man. Yeah. Like, women are going to be like that. Oh, alhamdulillah, she has a haq, isn't it? Yeah, and she's always oh. going to have your back and you, you need somebody yeah, yeah, to have your back all yeah, the time. Yeah, 100%. Um, but it just goes to show that, you know, sometimes you can be hurt yeah. by the people that are closest to you. Unintentionally, yeah, yeah. be it as it may. But that's what led to that all of that incident. Yeah. And um, the next major incident was the slap in the face, which um, you heard about. I heard about that one, the yeah. The phone call as yeah. well. I forgot about the first one. I was speaking about that one. Oh, that's what yeah, you Yeah, that's what I was about. speaking about. No, but the, that, that, that could be that another. Was, the one I spoke about now, that was, was before. My, that was the, the first time. And this followed up. Yeah, so, so that I don't recall that much apart from now that you mentioned it. Yeah. yeah. I, by the time yeah. I got slapped, I was a seasoned professional. Yeah. I was used to. You was used to kind of the boycotting and stuff yeah, like that. It, it, it didn't mean anything yeah. to me anymore. I mean, but, and the thing is, there's hajar which is you know correct, and mm. there's hajar which is misapplied. Yes. And you know, in all honesty, uh, a lot of the damage which is done amongst brothers is in a way where hajar is misapplied. Because it applied to people that you don't, you're not supposed to make hajar of in the first place. Do you know what I'm saying? It's and like, stuff it's like, like that. Yeah. yeah. The whole point in you abandoning somebody is for that person to come back to the truth. Yeah. You're abandoning me now. I just dislike you even more than I already did before. It's like. Yeah. You know, and it was so strange, actually, because you're in Medina yeah. to try to get close to Allah, but you're beefing worse than you would beef back in Jahili. It's, it's, it's really, really strange, yeah, man. Yeah. But it was a horrible, horrible, horrible experience, but a necessary one at that because it definitely made me stronger and a bit and much more resilient. 
and not so worried about what people say about me. Yeah. You know, some people are so conscious about what people say, it governs their life. Yeah, yeah. I'm at the stage now, I don't like people to not like me. It doesn't make me happy, but I'm absolutely comfortable with somebody hating my guts. Yeah, yeah. It just does no it skin. It's not going to no affect you. You could love me to death, yeah. or you could hate me to death. Yeah. That's you. Yeah. I'm still going to live my life and, 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 and be the best Muslim I can be and be the best father and be the best husband. And I got to that stage by being beat down so many times in yeah. Medina. Yeah. This is why when I said earlier, I'm a bit salty. It's the experience that it was like, it wasn't all good. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of pain yeah. that I went through yeah. with a boy caught him being yeah. physically attacked. Yeah. You know, you've known me for years. Have you probably, you've probably never seen no, me no, get ever. angry. Yeah, ever. I got more angry more times in that yeah. place than I saw a side of myself. And where was that? The, just so we, the, that was inside Masjid al as well? I got slapped inside Masjid al <laughs> Yeah. No. Imagine that. Yeah. I got slapped. It's, 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 it's an incredible story as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So much went on, Akhi, that I couldn't even sit down and tell you right now, yeah, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so much went on. Yeah. To the point that you get fed up, like Khalid said today, you just get fed up and you... Not that you become the aggressor, yeah. but you, you, you refuse to be bullied anymore. Yeah, yeah. So if you think you're going to bully me, you've got something else coming. Yeah, yeah. And that's what started to happen. And the, bully, the, the bullies started to be, to be not, they, they weren't victims anymore. It's not that like we were bullying them back, but I'm going to make life so difficult for you if you're mm. going to try to make me, try to compromise my happiness. Yeah, yeah. Right? So um, what happened was I, I, I was defending myself yeah. and I wasn't, I said, enough's enough, yeah. right? Um, and one time, this guy, remember, I just started Mesor at this stage, yeah. talking about this, the Yahya Hajuri this time. Yeah, yeah. The guy that went into extremes for his love for Al Hajuri was yeah. Ismail Bowman. I said, my, it's my name. Yeah. Ismail Online. Bowman yeah. from Mesor Arabic. I had people that were studying with me. Drop off. Drop off and say, can yeah. I have my money back? Yeah. I say this is this thing's different now. Yeah, yeah. It's affecting so many aspects of my life. So now, when I see you, I'm going to speak to you like a man, and we're yeah. going to deal with this proper. Yeah. So it happened. Yeah. I saw him, Achi, yeah. and I was by myself, and he was with a friend. Yeah. And it didn't go well. It didn't end up. It didn't end up nice for him. I'm not proud of what happened. Yeah, yeah. But I just put it this way: it didn't end up nice. It didn't. It didn't work out nice for him. But at the stage, I was so beat down that I just didn't care anymore. Mm. I didn't care if I got kicked out of Jamia. And yeah. I was there for how many years? Worked so hard to get there. Yeah. So then what happened? The incident happened. And then maybe a few days later, I was in the haram. And then his friend. So the guy that I was having an issue, he didn't do it. He's it was friend. his friend from New York. Yeah. Which I won't mention his name, doesn't There's no fighter. But he came up to me. Imagine I'm sitting down again in the haram, minding my business, yeah. reading a book actually, and I see him from a distance. He was tall, like, like yeah. six foot plus. I'm five foot eight on a good day. Yeah. On a good day, maybe nine if I'm wearing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some, yeah. <laughs> so some I, just Air Force or something. <laughs> yeah. He comes up to me, like, right? And I don't know what he's saying. I can just see anger. I can see aggression. And I didn't, I felt threatened. I wasn't scared, but I felt intimidated, right? So then I was with fingers. Yeah. So then I, instinctively, I didn't even do it on purpose. My body just stood up. I just stood up to him. And I just remember saying to him, what are you going to do? Mm. What are you going to do? I don't know what he was saying to me. I just said, what are you going to do? Because I knew what he was saying weren't good. And then, um, so imagine we're standing in a triangle. So I'm I was like, looking at it like, up yeah. like this. So he's all thinking. He had about five guys around him. People are just walking. So after he shot, you know, yeah. fingers stood up nice. So it's like a triangle, like this. Yeah. So I said, we're going to, we're going to, And he's like, he's looking at me. And I just remember, because my eyes were in line with his lips. Yeah. Because he's tall, isn't it? But a head bigger than me. And I swear to God, I don't know why his lips started shaking. It's probably because he was so angry yeah, at yeah. that fact. How dare you, you little British boy. Yeah. Stand up to me, kind of, because it's from New York, you know, the yeah. accent and all of that business. And so then I, I remember saying, I, said, I remember saying, look at him, he's coming up to me like he's, but he's scared. And as I, as I went like that to say to fingers, look at him, because now I want to show you, I'm not scared, yeah. even though I was intimidated, because yeah. it's intimidating somebody bigger than you coming up to you. And I wasn't even on, on a war mode. 
So I said, look at her. And then as I turned back, I saw a white man. <laughs> How did I didn't drop though? Yeah. That slap. And he slapped me with his left hand as well, like that stingy hand. That, he, <laughs> that was the disrespect, boy. Because he hit, because I was on his left. He slapped me so hard in my ear, bro. Yeah. And it was ringing. And I said to myself, That's Ajib, that's in the. He's just attacked you, basically, yeah. The prophet's masjid. Yeah. And strangely enough, yeah, as angry as I was and as shocked as I was, I didn't even do nothing. Yeah. I was like, I said to him, Mashallah. Yeah, all right. But uh, so when he did it, I was more surprised at his reaction. Yeah. I should have started reacting how he's reacting. Yeah. But I was as cool as a cucumber. Yeah. And he was trying to get me, get yeah. me. People were holding him back and he was going wild. Get off me. Yeah. So I said to him, Mashallah, Fulan, called him by his name. Yeah. I said, Darabtani fil waj. Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam hunaka. And I made ishara to the qabr of Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam. Qalali, I don't care. I don't care. And then he tried to get me again, he tried to swing for me. Yeah. And I did the Floyd Waymever. I just went, whoosh, yeah. shwaya, just like that. Yeah. Just leant back. And I said, that is it. That's it. It's over. I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to fight. Yeah. But I got too much respect and too much love for Rasulullah so to do it in the masjid. Yeah. So then um, they got escorted out of the masjid. And then that was it, I just was, I turned into a different, a different individual after that. Tried to go for him yeah. outside, the, outside, outside, outside in the forecourt. Um, I don't even know if you want to say this, but I'm just just being honest with you. I went home, drove home, like I was in tears out of yeah. anger. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, this is this is this is it now. Yeah. I have to. I, ha I said I have to get kicked out. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to be that guy that gets that title or the boy that got slapped in the face. I'd already had a hard time with all this refutation yeah, and yeah. other things that I haven't even mentioned. Yeah, know? yeah. So I went home. I was obviously in my fold. I walked to what I did. I walked to my house. My wife was like, it's all right, Glenn. I go sit Took off my clothes. I got into something that was a bit more suitable for the occasion. Yeah. I'm not proud of this, actually. Yeah, yeah. I say this with uh, shame, but I'm being honest. And I said, B, we're going home. She's like, what are you talking about? I said, we're going home. And then I walked out. She's like, no, no. She couldn't stop me at this stage. Yeah, yeah. Nobody could stop yeah. me. Me and you have to have a, we have Fine. to sort this out. Yeah. Well, we have to sort this out. Yeah. And then fingers came to accompany me and my brother-in-law, my wife's brother was with me. And I said to them, I said, guys, listen to me. Cause I knew where he, I knew which building he lived in. I just didn't yeah. know what door he lived in. I said, listen, Akhi fingers, don't touch me, man. You're my friend, just, just don't touch me now. Mm. When I see, if I see, just don't yeah. get involved, Akhi. This is, uh, we have to deal with this. And this is what makes me sad because I'm not like that. Yeah, That's yeah. not my character. Yeah. You've never ever heard me speak like mm. that in your life. Yeah. But I felt like I was becoming somebody that I didn't recognize. And mm. that's what made me so sad. And I went around his building, yeah. knocking on people's door, opening people's door, yeah, walking into people's room. I opened up one door. When my senses started to come back, I just opened up some people onto his door. I see three Indonesian brothers look at me like, Smiling, yeah. and I'm like, oh, as, as if someone yeah, could. And yeah. they was like, someone could. And then I found out where his, where, 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 where his room was. Yeah. And I knocked on his door and I said, and I said, all I'm waiting is to see something black. Oh, because he's a black guy yeah. that done it to me. Yeah. And I felt oppressed, I think. Yeah, yeah. I said, if I just see somebody with dark skin yeah. open up that door, then it's, it's, it's a problem. But I was a white face. Mm. And he said to me, Assalamu alaikum. I'm like, uh, Fulan yaskum huna? He's like, hey, naam, tafaddal. I was like, Bismillah. And I went to walk in. He said, I was not. When I say like the level of Junoon at the time yeah, yeah. was outside of the realms of what is normal. I yeah, think. Yeah. Finger said to me, like, we're in a corridor. So yeah. I knocked on the door. The guy said, tafaddal. So I'm going to walk in. Fingers, my brother-in-law, couple of Finger said, what are you doing? I'm yeah. like, I'm going inside. Yeah. I was going to wait in his room until he came back because yeah. that's the only way I felt you were going the to time. feel yeah. what you just made me feel. Mm. I don't have an issue with you, but now you've made it like that. Anyway, cut a long story short, ended up going home and I left my phone at home. My wife said, uh, nothing happened. He, he didn't see he it. Didn't, yeah. The phone's been ringing off the hook, ringing off the hook. Mm. I was like, all right. It rang. Yeah. I answered it. It was somebody from the University of Al Medina. Wow, it got that quick. News spread that quick. Yeah, it was like maybe like 12 o'clock at night now. Yeah. 
he calls me and he's like, ah, the Christopher. I said, hey, yeah. now. He goes, and I submit to Annaka, Timshi Hawla. And I was like, um, I was like, yes, but I just been attacked. This yeah. is why. He says, طيب, تعال بكرة, ساعة كذا وكذا. And then we're going yeah. to sort out the situation. So I was like, all right, cool. We start at 7.30. Yeah, yeah, it's early. So I said, fingers, come. Come with me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm, I calm down the next day now. Yeah. So I'm not angry no more. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm Ismail now. Yeah, yeah. So then, Akhi, we walk over to the, 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 the building they told us to go. I walk into the building. I walk up the first flight of stairs. You know how it's like in those buildings. Yeah, yeah. I, I walk up the second flight of stairs. Bro, I get to the top of the stairs. And I see all of them. All that together? The boy yeah. that slapped me? Yeah, and the rest of them. All of the them. Crew. Yeah. Two, my five or six guys. Yeah. And it's just me and fingers. Yeah. And all of them are like this. Yeah. And I'm like, oh gosh. Cut a long story short, we get into the thing and all of these khitabs are on the table that these accusations, I'm going to call them accusations. Yeah, yeah. Some true. Yeah. But some false or yeah. some just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. The man said to me, uh, Christopher, Damuka har. Okay. Which means your blood is hot. Yeah. Another way of saying, you got anger management problems. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, why, why, why do you say that? You don't know the story, you just see. All that so stuff, I, yeah. I read, yeah. I read. Yeah. I, I read. I read. I read. I read the, the khitabs. And every single khitab that I read, was obviously painting me in a bad light. Yeah. But they might mention two people, three people might mention the same story, but from different eyewitnesses. Yeah, so yeah, it yeah. just looks like I'm a menace. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, that Sheikh, هذا, هذا ما حصل. وهذا, this is what happened. And yeah. listen, and this is what happened. Yeah, yeah. But then when I read the khitab with the one that slapped me, yeah. you know what he said? And I swear to God, I begged him, please let me take a picture. Yeah. He's like, la, la, la. I even said, I'm going to raise the qadiyya and the mahkamah yeah, and the yeah, 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 I might need it for, because yeah. I'm thinking of like as a contingency plan. Yeah. The boy said that he slapped me in my face, right? Because he came up to me to advise me. He came up to me to advise me and, um, and I called him a mukhannif, a mukhannif, or whatever yeah. the word is. I don't even know, what, I, didn't, I didn't know what that word meant. Yeah. But I believe it means a homosexual. Yeah. I missed that part of the story. I called him a sweet boy. Okay. I yeah. did call him a sweet yeah. boy when I was face to face. Because I was intimidated, yeah. and that was my way of telling him, I'm not scared. I said, We're gonna yeah. do sweet boy. I said, We're gonna do sweet boy. When I said, yeah. We're gonna do, we're gonna. So we're gonna he's do... turned that, has turned it into. You're gay. Yeah, yeah, or you're that's right. Yeah, yeah. He's basically and elaborated did... on something which oh, wasn't gosh, there. Yeah, yeah, he knows he doesn't mean that. Yeah, yeah. I was calling him a sweet boy, and me saying, I'm not scared of you. You're yeah. sweet. You're, you're, yeah. you're, you know what I'm saying? Not that you're homosexual. Like, get your head out of the gutter, man. I don't yeah. think like yeah. stuff yeah. like that. I don't think he's a homosexual. Yeah. Maybe though, I'm not giving him a defence. Because he's from America. He's from America, yeah. cookie biscuit, yeah, that, crisps and yeah. chips and that type of. Yeah, that you have hit, those, it, those discussions it, it, it as well. Later. Yeah, yeah. That hit me later. Yeah. So when I said, when he said that, but that wasn't even the, yeah. the issue really. He said that I called him a, a, a mukhannaf and then I raised my hand to hit okay, him. Yeah, yeah. So he's, he's, he's lied basically. And he's then he hit me to yeah. protect himself. Yeah, he's lied basically. Yeah. That's why I wanted to take a picture. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone would have believed me. It's the yeah. first time I've ever told this story, you know. Yeah. And um, that boy couldn't look me in my face ever again. Yeah. I swear to God. Mm. One time they came in, him and the guy that put pressure on fingers in Al Kawis. Yeah. It's me and fingers, guy, them two. I turn around now and I'm not even angry, I'm disappointed. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, really? Yeah. Like, I look this guy in the face and they're just like this. Yeah. Because you're shame face. Yeah, you've got yeah, nothing a, to be embarrassed yeah. about. You could look me in my face yeah. and say, yeah, that's what you said. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, but I remember the audio and all the stuff and it was embarrassing for him. No, the audio. It was know, something else. That's, the, that's it, another. All right, so I've been assaulted. We, we have to move the story forward though because we've got so much more to talk I'm about. I'm so sorry, actually. That's another <laughs> like, story. More beneficial stuff. That's talking, another story. You're, you're, you're talking about, about in your mouth. I'm going to come up in your mouth, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what that means. <laughs> But anyway, just on a side note, I mean, I think there's two things. A lot of brothers that, uh, I guess, were kind of like on that, let's say, harshness in how they yeah. deal with people. And justly, they've, they're not longer, they're, they've they're no seen, longer they're no longer on that. They've seen it for what it is. They have ihtiram for the scholars. Yeah. They don't want to 
cut off scholars yeah. just because of a, a mistake, yeah. which some people say is a mistake and it's an issue, perhaps. Exactly. Stuff like that. So a lot exactly. of people have changed as well. Yeah, I think some yeah. people have been on the yeah. receiving end. And they've been on the receiving end. And they've realised. And they've realised, so yeah. that they were... Also, you know yeah. Saying? So there's a, there's a shift, inshallah. I, I there's a shift. I've got so yeah. many stories to, to tell you about people that have changed. Yeah. People that say, well, you were like a no-go zone. I couldn't yeah. even salam you. Yeah. And then now, because it happened to him, he realises... Yeah. It's, it's not sad. It's not just. It's yeah. sad, man. I've got a, a foster brother of mine that's a Muslim forever posting refutations, like, on, on, on his, on his uh, Insta I said to him Three, four days ago I said, bro Chill out You're gonna burn out Yeah, yeah And he goes I don't understand why people Get upset when I post Refutations of the scholars They're from the scholars I'm like I've been a Muslim Nearly 17 years Yeah, yeah I've been there Done that Worn a t-shirt Trust me Just chill out Leave it Focus on learning about Allah Focus on getting a connection With Allah Learn more about Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. Focus on being kind to your parents. Do you know what I'm saying? If you're married, focus on being a good husband. If you've got kids, focus on being a good um, uh, parent. Yeah. If you're a member of your community, focus on being an impactful member of your community. Leave yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Leave all of that stuff, especially when you're a baby in the deen. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is the advice of the scholars from Alta now. Do you know what I'm it's saying? It's the same. This knowledge is knowledge of, of, of refutations is is from the highest levels of knowledge because it involves the honour of people and it involves people, loads of things, man. Oh, you're not man. want to be oh, careful where you're treading when it comes to these things. Me, yeah. It's not light. You know. and I feel that... Um, it's not light, no. Focus on yourself. Was, as, we, as new Muslims, it was a big disservice that the older generation put on our shoulders because yeah, yeah. we were carrying the reputation of Brixton and yeah. these times I'm not even from Brixton. <laughs> I'm carrying the beef of some uh, of area that, you know what I'm saying, I inherited that. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and it was um, it was yeah. crazy, but sorry, bro. That's alhamdulillah. Inshallah, hopefully, there's a lot of I think there's a lot of benefit to come out of it for students that might feel they've yeah. you know bef- you know they can see what their experience is. So um, absolutely. So hadith graduated a difficult time. Difficult time. It's very from, difficult because of the relationship with some of the not just people. because of that. The, 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 the subjects bo- were difficult. Subjects were difficult as subjects well. Subjects were difficult. The amount of memorization was hard. Yeah. We only had to memorize um, Juz Amma in the Mahad, which is like, what, 30-odd surahs? Yeah, after and, that. And then we went to Mustawa Al-Awwal in the Kulliya, and we had to memorize half of Baqarah in yeah. the first semester yeah. of the first year, second semester of the first year, the other half of Baqarah, yeah. on top of about 150 a hadith. Yeah, so it's two and a half juz a year. Yeah. And, and a lot of hadith and the fiqh issues and the other subjects. Other stuff as well. Yeah. We've done usul al-fiqh for like a term, yeah. which was, a, you know, you've never done it before and you study it in Arabic. Yeah. That was a, that was a, that was a, then we've done like subjects like takhreej. Yeah. Difficult. Um, it was mad. A lot. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Well, was, alhamdulillah, you finished, you graduated. By Allah's permission. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Came back to the... Came back to the UK and yeah. um, when I came back, it was difficult to adjust, I won't lie. I was living out of a suitcase for like a good year or so yeah. in between my in-laws and my, so I was back to square one again. Yeah. And it was a shame, isn't it? It's like you've got this, this honour of graduating, but you don't have no honour of being a man yeah. in your home. Yeah. Not that my wife made me feel like that. I'm just saying that it was like, I should be, I feel like I should be providing. Yeah, and then obviously the shaitan comes or maybe your own weaknesses and things. I just waste eight years of my life. Yeah. Like, I could have been, especially when you see other brothers that are driving nice cars. And yeah. That's another thing as well. Like sometimes if you're short-sighted, you can only see here and now. Yeah. You can't see 10 years down the line because when it's all said and done, my experience in Medina is my experience. I can always, I've, I've got that. Nobody can take that away from me. Money comes and money goes. Yeah. I don't have money today, I might have money next year. Yeah. I'll forget about all of the times I never had no money. Yeah. But I still got my experiences. And what I will say, Akhi, is that when I eventually got diagnosed with cancer, um, that shook me up. Yeah. Akhi, that shook me up to my core. Yeah. Like in ways that I could never even Let's express. speak about that because to be honest with you, when I think the first so when you came back I don't know how long after, but alhamdulillah, you were, we were yeah. working together. It was a year you were teaching at Medina. It was about a year. Medina College, so I had isn't it? When I, when I was and teaching. Exactly. That's the thing now. I didn't know. That's the thing. So, yeah. what I think, and I think that's why it's, I guess, it's really important because 
although I noticed you kind of losing weight a little bit, mm. getting a bit slimmer, I just put it down to the fact that you're going gym or you, the army. I didn't really Same here, bro. clock that it was because of the cancer, you had yeah. cancer. Yeah. Same here. I thought it was stress and gym. That's it. Yeah. Because I think even we had a discussion at one point. So you're here teaching, you're working at Medina College, you're teaching one of the Arabic classes, Arabic yeah. Islamic sciences. Yeah. You know, putting together the curriculum, yeah. doing stuff like that. Yeah. At the same time, you're, you've got Mesor Arabic, which is an online, online. Medina book syllabus that t- students can... Absolutely. And you're marking homework. And yeah. you're also thinking about these other projects that you're... And I was working in um, Waitrose. And you was working in Waitrose. Graveyard shift, 11 till 6 <sighs> at night. Yeah. 11 p.m. Till 6 a.m. A.m. Yeah. And I'm thinking, what am I doing here? I was with the scholars last week and now I'm stuck in shit. <laughs> you have to provide for your family though. It goes back to what we were saying. I would leave from Purley, yeah. get to Balham for like seven, yeah. help my kids get ready for school and then I'd knock out until like three or something. Yeah, like yeah. It was it was too much. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the stress I just told you about Medina and I just told you two stories, you know. Yeah. Out of about twenty. Yeah. Which were all equally as stressful. Um, that does something to your body, right? Yeah on top of financial issues, does something to your body. Being in Medina, trying to graduate, not telling you can't go, all of this, all of these restrictions. And I feel, I don't know, but I feel it was a combination of a bad diet, all that stress contributed, wallahu a'alam, to me being diagnosed with colon cancer. But what I was going to say, my time in Medina, it helped me when I hit rock bottom because it was my belief in Allah the lessons that you learn about tawakkal and qadr that got me through the worst times of my life. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Where I wanted to give up. I had nothing yeah. left. That. I'm like about maybe 76, 77 kg now. Yeah. I went down to 45. Mm. Can you imagine that? That's nearly half my weight right at that, that I am now. I can show you a picture. Yeah. I can show you a picture of when I was like that. Yeah. Skin and oh. bones. Literally. Yeah. So you got diagnosed colon cancer when and how's that? Tell us a bit about what's yeah, so yeah, the, how um, that's progressed and what's the situation. Yeah, yeah. very, very quickly what happened was um, I was losing weight and mum, she was like, you need to go get a blood test. I was like, no, no, mum, I'm cool, I'm cool. I put off a long time. Eventually listened to her, results came back fine. Imagine. Yeah. Yeah. She said, get a second opinion. I'm like, no, yeah. mum, they said I'm... Um, yeah, always listen to your mum, by always, the way. Always, always, always. always, 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 always. always. Sahabati or kama qal. Listen to your mom. She says, go get Ummuka thumma, Ummuka thumma, Abuka kama qal. So she goes, go back for a second opinion. But this time I had to do a blood test and a stool sample, which yeah. was embarrassing, man. Yeah. It's like yeah. bringing in my stool in the bag yeah. and like, oh gosh. Yeah. Anyway, quite a long story short, because I have told this part of the story. I got told to come in. I came in and I came in on my birthday on the 20th of August, 2018. So we said, all right, Mr. Beaumont, all right, we've seen some. After prom- imagine this, you know, after promising me it's not going to be anything serious, it's probably something else. He goes, oh, we're going to have to do a test for, um, I think he might have said some more, re- whatever. And I, and I asked him, like, why, what are you looking for? And he basically said, potentially cancer. Mm. We need a colonoscopy. And I'd never heard of that word before. I remember saying to him vividly, a colonoscopy, what? Mm. He said, a colonoscopy, we're going to have to put a camera. And he went like this. Mm. Mm. He just done like this, you know. To me, a young black boy, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know the culture. Yeah, yeah. No, no go. Bozo. No go. <laughs> and you're doing it like that. Yeah. Why do you have to do that for? And I'm like, no. I said, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, I got a choice. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? And my wife was like, no, baby, you have to do it. And I'm like, yeah. Five days later, actually, I got the confirmation that it was colon cancer. Yeah. And um, yeah, my, my, my whole life, that would have been the 25th of August. Remember, we just fit past three years, you know? Yeah. We just passed the three year mark. Where the, what, the 3rd of September today? Yeah. Or something like that? Yeah. So it was like, what? Fifth or something, yeah. Yeah, nearly 10 days ago was my f- uh, three year anniversary. Of like. the fact that when you got told, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, it's been a mad roller coaster, and I can't even believe it's been three years, but I'm grateful. Yeah. It's been three years. But to answer your question, I um, had co- uh, co- uh, cancer in my colon, I had a tumor. They cut it out, and how they do it is they take off X amount of centimeters this way and this way. Yeah. So your colon's really, really big. You've got your 
um, it attaches to your small your intestines, intestines. And your large intestines. Yeah. Like that. I used to know this thing like the back of my hand, yeah, but yeah. Just, you know, it's knowledge that I left. Yeah, 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 you forgot about because, mm. yeah, it's not. Yeah. So they cut it and they, they joined it, but they gave me a bag. Yeah. That's another story for another yeah. day. Worst experience for me. Yeah. Be, uh, to, 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 to be honest with you, the time that I was in hospital for the whole duration and all of the pain that I went through wasn't as a result of the cancer. It was a result of the surgery. So mm. when they cut me the first time, um, because my body was obviously, uh, what do you call it? Just, um, yeah, like, I was on, oh, yeah, yeah, he was on general anaesthetic and stuff like yeah, that. So was, yeah, your muscles are relaxed. Yeah, That's yeah. It, your muscles are relaxed. The hole that they made for the, the, the stoma bag yeah. was X. Let's say it was like this. But obviously now when I've woken up, because I'm still young and, you know, yeah, the hole's gone up. tight. Yeah. So what happened was when it was time for feces to come through the bag, it yeah. wasn't coming through because the hole was too tight. Yeah, yeah. So I was getting pains more than you know, like yeah. extreme bloating. Like yeah. you couldn't even touch my bed like that. Yeah. Screaming for my mum. Yeah, yeah. Screaming for my mum. Yeah. At like all hours of the night. Yeah. On morphine and all of these types of drugs, actually, right? Um, and then they had to, like two weeks later because we complained like. What is going on? Why is my son uh, going through all this pain? They put me back under the, the, the knife again. Um, I'd love to show you my scar, but it's, yeah. I sh maybe I'll show you after the camera. Um, I had five tubes coming in five, me, bro. Yeah, yeah. One here, one here, one here, one in my privates, and another there was someone around here. And I still got the scars to show it. Um, they put me under the thing again, and they increased the size, and that brought me so much relief. Because yeah. now it can come out proper. Yeah. But it's still a new thing to get used to. Like, yeah. it just come. It just happens when you, yeah, you don't, yeah, control it. Yeah, farts when you don't want yeah. it to fart. You could be out on the road and you could fill up. Yeah, so I'm thinking to myself, life as I know is over. Yeah, because they said that I might have to have it forever. Yeah, I'm like, no, I'm not having this forever. I want, yeah. I want you to fix me back, turn yeah. me back yeah. to you know how I yeah. was created, kind of thing. Um, I remember one time as well. You know, like the initial, when you go, when you're going to go through any general aesthetic, where you get aesthetic? Anesthetic. Anesthetic, yeah. sorry. Yeah. When you get put to sleep, they have to tell you what might happen. Yeah. Worst yeah. case scenario, the duty bound. It's like they scare you, innit? Bro, <laughs> he nearly put me off the thing. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. I'm in this consultation, yeah. Yeah, that's awful. And he said to me, oh, um, I got to tell you, because we're, this is where it is right here, yeah? My belly button's here. Yeah, yeah. This is where it, the, the, the wound is. And... They done it keyhole surgery. Yeah, it's in my colon. Yeah, so they're gonna have to do whatever they do and go down. He said, "Oh, because we're gonna be cutting around there. I have to tell you, you may not ever be able to use it again." Yeah, yeah. I'm like, dude, so, this it's not is, what you wanna hear, is it? It's just not happening. Yeah, just don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. It's, it's ain't happening. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, at the time, I was like 33 years old. Yeah. Like, I just got had four kids. You yeah. gonna tell me like I could never use that? But yeah. I felt like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then it's, it's enough to, to me, put a person really down, isn't it? The person and uh, stuff like that. It was crazy, yeah. but that wasn't even the worst part. He was like, it's my, this, is my, this is my surgeon now. The one yeah. that was going to do the surgery. Yeah. So he's like, because um, he needed to check where the tumour was. So I was like, okay, are, are you going to do that? And he goes like, can you just jump on the bed? I've never told this story. And I'm like, Dude, I just felt, I was just violated five couple days ago yeah, yeah. with the camera, and now he's like, he wants to check. I'm like, are oh, you want to check? Yeah, his hands. And I was like, for ages I wouldn't do it. Yeah, not to mention your body doesn't even allow you to do stuff like that. It must. It doesn't. <laughs> just, it doesn't, bro. It doesn't. It's a, a one way. Um, one way person. Yeah. It doesn't. So then I had to. Yeah, of course. Because yeah. it's like yeah, it's, it's potentially life and death. Of you know course. What I'm saying? Yeah. So I jumped on the, um, the bed and he had to actually, and it was like, it yeah. was the worst experience ever. I, 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 my body was shaking. I, could, I was crying. Yeah, of course. Even thinking about it now, I'm all right to talk about it, but it's so emotional because it was such a traumatic experience to have another man invade an area of your body that you don't want him to invade. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, and it was horrid, man. I couldn't even look him in it after it. I couldn't. I was obviously yeah. I was in tears. Actually, yeah. I was screaming because it hurt. Yeah, of course. It hurt more than you can imagine. It didn't last long, but it hurt. Yeah. And um, I said I couldn't look him in the face. I was just like this. I felt like 
I feel like I've been raped. Yeah. That's how I felt, okay. Yeah. In my spirit. Yeah. I know it's not that, but yeah. I felt like that in my it's spirit. It's medical and it's it's a necessity, it's isn't a it? Ne- obviously. It's yeah. A ne- so but, you know, from a shadow of perspective. Yeah, he leave. Not yeah. even from it, it was more ego yeah. and it was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. that I was yeah. battling with. Yeah. Like yeah. what's just happened to you? Yeah. And then um, you know, since then I've been in and out of hospital. Can, I, can we talk about something? I I think I really want to kind of get it out there because uh when someone, you know, male you know, reserve you, give you a long well, life yeah, and cure um, you completely. Well, yeah. Uh, well, it's a lot of, when people get the news and they get the, you know, okay, we have to do chemotherapy. Yeah. All right. And sometimes it's like, hold on a minute, that's going to make me sick. Yeah. So I'm going to, you know, I don't want to do that. I'm going to get herbal or try to get, yeah. you know, seek other means, alternative sure. medicine For sure. to cure. Yeah, yeah. To get some, you know, because yeah. chemotherapy is going to be invasive, it's going to mm. damage me and stuff mm. like that. Uh, but knowing that w- what we do know about cancer, let's say medically speaking, conventional medicine, mm. uh, you know, the the thing that does kill it is either cutting it out if you get there early or chemotherapy because I it. I wouldn't say ki- it kills doesn't it. kill it. it Even cutting it, out, it doesn't kill it. It yeah. doesn't kill it. It, it. it what it does is that. You take away the symptom, yeah, because the symptom is the tumor, yeah. And I had an argument with one of the doctors one time, or the nurse, and she was like, "No, that's the cause." I said, "No, the tumor grew because, because of, of something, cancer. yeah, because whatever it was, whatever it was, yeah." Let's attack the reason why I got the cancer. Was it my diet? Was it stress? Yeah. What, what was is it? Is it genetic? What is it? Mm. But by cutting it out. They merely just got rid of the the main tumor that has grown. Yeah. But they're not. You don't know which inevitably is what happened, how that spread. So this is why they normally do the surgery. Yeah. And then they want to blast you with the chemo yeah. just in case they missed anything. Oh yeah. But my body, as I said, it was so weak and so uh, so thin and, and and fragile. They said that you can't even take chemo. Oh. I couldn't take it straight away. Yeah. And when they wanted to give it to me, I refused. Yeah. Because I was scared uh, primarily of the the cosmetic things that were going to happen. Yeah, losing your hair, hair dropping out, and all the other ramifications that come with uh, chemo. Yeah, I have since started chemo okay. in Germany. When yeah. Mashallah, Tabarakallah, may Allah reward every single person that donated. They raised overall over the two uh, fundraisers in excess of a hundred k for me. Alhamdulillah, good. That made me feel so special. Yeah. It's running out. I've got about maybe 26 grand left. Yeah. Because um, it's expensive, you know. The first time I went to Germany, I spent 31,000. Yeah. One time for the six weeks I was telling yeah. you. Every time I go now, it's about four to 5,000 pounds. Mm-hmm. What am I doing in Germany? Yeah, no. The, what I'm, I guess, alhamdulillah, you're, you've still got your hair. Because, yeah. because I said to the doctor, he goes, we're going to give you a low, a low dosage or low, um, yeah, low dose chemo regime. Which, and I kept saying, am I hair going to drop out? Yeah. Am I going to get all of these other symptoms that people that take chemo get? He was like, no, nah, you might get, you know, some of the feelings, that, which I have, I do get. He goes, but your hair shouldn't drop out because it's a low dose. So let's say, for example, what they give you in the NHS would be 100%. He, they, he gave me like 25 or 30% of that. Yeah. So it's not enough for my hair to drop out. And as you can see, and I think that's why I started growing it, you know. Yeah, because you wanted to. But, Maybe psychologically, I was yeah. thinking I was scared of it going and I'm growing it to say, oh, I've still got it here. You know, yeah. I never used to have this type of hairstyle yeah. before. Um, and um, so, yeah, it, it, yeah. It, so I'm taking chemo, but it's not taking out my hair because of the, the, the dosage. Is that, me. I'm going to ask you a question. I don't hope you don't mind, but don't would it be better to take a high dose in terms of the prognosis for the cure or the thing, not? The thing is, Akhia, yeah. And it's really difficult. Yeah. I know it's difficult to hear this and it's obviously difficult to say it, but they have it. They said to me, it's my oncologist, right? I went for a scan one time. It's before I went to Germany for chemo. This is when they wanted to give me chemo on NHS. He says to me, I says to him, Doc, I know it's in the hands of Allah, but he's a professional. I want your opinion. I said, how long do you give me? Because he can see how far the cancer has progressed. He said, I give you one year, no chemo, three years chemo. So either way, he, he that's said, his prognosis. I'm going to die. This Regardless dis- of the... This, te- this disease is going to kill me. Yeah. That's what he said to me. So can you imagine hearing someone say that to you, Akhi? Yeah. I've had more doctors tell me that 
this is this this is gonna kill you. I'm like, it's like meeting your murderer. Yeah. It's like, no, I I, I didn't accept it then. I didn't accept. I, I didn't accept it, and I don't accept it now. I accept the diagnosis. The diagnosis is you have cancer, Mr. Bowman. You got colon cancer. I don't accept the prognosis. Yeah. You've got one year or three years to live because yeah. it's three years, and I'm still. I know I'm thin. Yeah. But I'm still going strong. You didn't it's been three years since it's the been, first. It's been three years since, since I, I, they said that. I, no, no, since I was first diagnosed. Yeah. So um, that didn't make me feel good as well. I was with my wife when I heard it yeah. as well. It's just like. Alhamdulillah, your wife's played a big role, and your and your parents as well. There would be yeah, parents hundred percent, but more so my missus. Yeah. And I said to you today, and I'll say, camera, is this one working? That there would be no Ismail, as everybody knows Ismail without. Samia, Abdullah, Muhammad, and that's facts. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be able to be as strong as I am, yeah. speak about my experience if I never had somebody that was supporting me. Because yeah. there's times I don't want to take my tablets. Yeah. There's times I don't want to take my tablets. Times I don't want to get out of bed. Times when I was depressed, yeah. and I've always had somebody in my corner to hold me down and to make me think everything's going to be okay, even when I don't believe it. You know. Yeah. So um, yeah, and I, I reiterate that. There will be no Mesor, as you know it, no Little Mesor, no Little Mesor Academy. Obviously, after Allah. Yeah. But then, yeah. without the support of my wife. Facts. Yeah. And sometimes I wonder, I say to myself, it's not nice being in this situation. But I don't know, is it harder for you to deal with leaving your family or the fault that your family has to continue without you? Yeah. Because let's say we all believe in life after death. Yeah, yeah. Right? We're, we're, we're on a journey. Yeah. We're going to die, then we're going to go somewhere else. Yeah, right? So yeah. we're all making that, that preparation for that inevitable you know, journey to the hereafter. Yeah. La qadrah Allah, yeah? Allah forbid, but if I were to pass away in the next say, month or so, I've got a lot to answer for. Mm. Right? So I'm going to be accountable for a lot before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as you know, I'm going to be worried about myself because I'm dead. Yeah. I'm in my grave. I'm worried about Munkar and Nikir asking me questions and getting it right. That's what I'm going to be concerned about. And that's, if, I'm, if, if, if they show me that I've got, I'm going to a good place, I'm going to be happy in my grave. Be idhni, Rabbina Azza wa Jal. And I ask the same for yourself, mm. and I ask the same for yourself. Mm. But then imagine from, not just my family, anybody's family, whether it's a husband that has to continue living on, or the wife that has to continue living on, or the kids. They have to live the next 50, 60, 70 years potentially of their life without you around. Yeah. That for me is, I think it's harder from her perspective to see somebody that you, remember I said I saw my daughter in the thing and it yeah. hurt me because yeah, it's like, yeah. you're going through so much pain, you can't do nothing. Yeah. It's the same for my wife. Yeah. Since the cancer and since even with the treatment, I've developed a condition called lymphedema. Yeah. It's a very, very, it's a, a really strange condition which causes the sweat. You must have seen, you know, sometimes you, you see women, like old ladies with their swelling. legs are so yeah. swollen. Yeah. Sometimes you see the veins popping yeah. up. I've got that condition. Yeah. Not as, mar- not as bad as that. But, but it's there. Bro, yeah. it was crazy. It started off with a niggle in my groin. Yeah. And I went to check it out. And they said like, um, it might be a hernia. I was like, cool. Then it went down to my area. Yeah. 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 And then it went down to my legs. Then it went down to my my fire uh, my, my thighs and my, my my thing, and then my feet, my feet look fat, double the size. Yeah. This is why I have to sit down. Well, to yeah. And and what's happened now is like you there is no cure for lymphedema. So a lot of my journey actually ever since I've been diagnosed with cancer is trying to get used to the new normal. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I used yeah. to be very athletic, gym running, strong. Yeah. And I had a lot of heart and I still got a lot of heart. It's just my body can't do what it used to be. My body can no longer do what it used to be able to yeah. do. And I battle with that. Yeah. I battle with that because, again, it's getting used to the new normal. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, there's a lot, I guess, one of the things is your wife, for example, also your parents. Your parents usually expect to outlive their yeah. children as well. Yeah. You know, anyone can die at any point, you know, mm-hmm. you know anyone you know can die at any point but you, they're still kind of like the parent, the, the norm like yeah, you yeah. said what yeah, you expect yeah. to happen yeah sure you know so that's also going to obviously difficult for your parents yeah. as well there's yeah. a whole lot yeah. that happens I want to touch on something because the new norm seems to also be something which is amazing a lot of I, I don't like the word productivity but let's Tell us about because you're doing a lot. I don't. You're doing a lot more than someone that's healthy does, basically. I appreciate that. And you know, if we're going to speak about even before you, 
started Little Mace, or you had Mace or for learning Arabic That's for correct. adults, yeah. that branched off onto Little Mace or Little Mace or, yeah. which is the which is primarily um, it's a company that specialises in bilingual books, Arabic and English for kids. Yeah. We got the plush toys. That's what we started off with, yeah. and cartoons. Yeah. Remember the cartoons. Yeah, I remember the cartoons. I remember the, the cartoons. books, the yeah. toys. That's yeah. what we started. So again, it's Arabic and English bilingual, English. where you can. You're reading English and picking up Arabic words for kids. That's it. Yeah. So with the focus is lines. with catchy storylines, yeah. morals, morals, moral um, story, Islamic, teaching Islamic eth ethics, eth all of etiquettes, that, all of that for kids. For kids yeah. and um, colorful books. Colorful books. Yeah. We done really. This is the boss. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. We done. Um, we done. This really. is the longest interview so far. By the way. <laughs> I really apologize, man. <laughs> no, um, not at all. Yeah. Yeah. We, it was really successful, but I started at Medina, so it was really, really difficult to manage and scale. As you can imagine, money's limited and yeah. resources and stuff like that. And then what happened was, cut a very long story short, came back to the UK. My children started attending the local madrasa in Balam. Um, my wife wasn't happy with how my kids were being treated because it was predominantly um, a, a, a particular race yeah, at this yeah. madrasa. Yeah. And um, my wife felt that my kids were being, yeah. you know, um, singled out and yeah. in some time, like picked on a little bit by yeah. the teachers. Yeah. So then that's how Little Mix or Academy came. Yeah. Out of frustration. I yeah. said, you know what, like, I need to take control of this situation, bit of an ilay ta'ala. And then we ended up opening up our own little madrasa. We started in a, a community centre yep. in, in Stockwell. Then we branched off to... Um, uh, Kings Avenue. That's where school. we're currently yeah. uh, situated. We've got a playground, classrooms. Playground, classrooms, yeah. hall, cage of yeah. football. And um, we started off with 60 students over two days, right? So 30 on Saturday, 30 on yeah. Sunday. And now we've probably, inshallah, hopefully, it's come September or we're in September now in two weeks' time. Maybe I wouldn't be surprised if we hit 190. Alhamdulillah. Net my barakah. And that's, by, by last and alhamdulillah, sure. again. Uh, you're an educator you've been doing teaching exactly Arabic okay. for a long time exactly okay. and it's not that you teach it's also it's how you present it and this is where I want to speak about some of the new stuff that you've got coming up Absolutely. because it's not just about teaching Arabic it's about teaching Arabic in a way which the students are going to be engaged and learn yeah. and you started that with the Mesur Arabic Absolutely. in the sense of it was a new way of teaching the Medina yeah. books using yeah, for yeah. example graphics yeah, yeah. which you did yourself by the way yes, yes, you so know that's your media yeah. background type oh, yes, the creativeness yeah. in you yeah. I'm rushing because I know we've been here for a long time, but yeah. I'm going to put it all in anyway, no worries, inshallah. Yeah. And, you know, alhamdulillah, this shows that you're very creative. Tell us a bit about these, okay. these things that you've got coming out. Absolutely. So, uh, and let's know about Because it's for kids. And the most important thing is if you teach, as they say, when you're teaching someone when they're a child, it's like writing in stone, basically. Stone, yeah. Whereas if it's an adult, it's like writing on water. <laughs> so this is for kids. It's really important that kids pick up Arabic. 100%. Arabic is, yeah, let's go. Uh, one of the things that we like to focus on at Little Mesor, and this is even, you know, uh, advice for the, and yeah, for the madrasas well, and stuff like that. Yeah. We focus, Achi, on memories. Yeah. I focus on memories, bro. Yeah, yeah. So every time a child comes to LMA, I want to give them the most fantastic memories ever. Yeah. Such that when they become our age, because at the end of the day, all we have when we get old is our memories. That's all yeah. we have to connect us back to our past. Yeah. So if you fill a child's life or the childhood with good memories, then when they see us, inshallah ta'ala, when they're 30 years old, it's not going to be a case that it's for some people like, oh, there's my teacher from the mother or something. Yeah. Fast. They're going to stop. They're going to say, hey, ha. and that's what I want to do. Yeah. So anything that I do, I always try anyway to the best of my ability to think 5, 10, 15 years in the future. Yeah. How is this child going to feel like this, you know? So anyway, this is the... Um, one of the uh, products that we've got, it's a prototype. One of the products we've got coming out called um, Kaaba Adventure 50 Pop-Out Questions. Um, it can be used in conjunction with a board game that's coming out. And in essence, what it is, it's a really fun way for children to test themselves or even, you know, test other people in terms of, you know, sitting down with their friends and quizzing them with a simple question and to, you know, um, find out the answer. You've got this pull-down mechanism, pulls down, and the answer's revealed. And... Uh, it's double sided. So there's 25 cards in here. Each card obviously having two sides is 50. And all the questions are pertaining to Islamic studies, Arabic and, and Quran. This happened, I don't, we didn't tell you, this happened when I was in Germany from a dream. A dream, akhi. A dream. I saw it in my dream, woke up uh, and I made it. This one here, another prototype which I'm really uh, proud about. It's called Arabic Ninja. And it's, it consists of 15 pop-out revision cards designed that if the child memorizes them, 
they're going to learn how to master the Arabic language. So let's not do the first one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's do the second one. Alhamdulillah for the pre. Yeah, Allahu Akbar. Um, it says, um, which letters have one dot on top? So now you have to think about that, right? What letters in the Arabic have one dot on top? Well, it's noon. It's yeah. one. Kha yeah. is another one. What else we got, guys? Ghain. Yeah. Bad. Like, but yeah. obviously a child would have to do that. And then all of the letters are there. But before the child reveals the answer, they can use the pen to write it down. So it's fun. It's creative. It's interactive. And the best about it, best thing about it, even after you write whatever you write, rub it out. And it's as good as new. You can use it for all of the family, man. So I, yeah. this was um, a, a shoot off of, of this uh, first product I showed you. Yeah. So I'm really, really... Um, so these are education resources there. Yep. Just to make it clear, you designed them yourself. The idea came from yourself. You Every, prototyped to yourself. Ev you everything. I contacted Alibaba yeah. Yeah. myself. Yeah. Um, I contacted a graphic designer on... If anybody ever wants a graphic designer, um, check out... You can check out Fiverr, but I like to use um, Upwork. Fantastic. Upwork, okay. Yeah, Upwork is really, really good. And again, that happened in Germany. When I was getting my first round of chemo both of these. And this card game called Yalla, which is um, a really, really fun way for children to um, just, you know, family games. with the, who, who don't like to play games with, your, with the kids and stuff like yeah. that? Whereby you've got, um, there's four games that you can play with this deck of cards. Uh, and all the games are, you know, mentioned the rules of the game. You know, they're mentioned here. And then um, it's just a really, really lovely way to learn in a fun way yeah. for the kids and to create those those good memories inshallah yeah. and this is I guess this is so much needed when you know we have everyone stuck on a device trust me right YouTube yeah. we need to kind of get away from the phones and these are the type of things that would not just entertain and it would also educate educate yeah and I, I, I'm, I'm especially for kids that, you know education needs to be fun and yeah. there's not enough resources like, like this, this so Jazakallah yeah. to you and your yeah, thank you so much, wife Fatima, and for you and know me. producing this and inshallah you know obviously I'm taking that yeah 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 that's yours man <laughs> this that's, is mine that's yours, this is my right. one I'm going to go and play this this evening inshallah yeah. let me know how Little you find it, man I will do inshallah I'll give feedback from the family and stuff That'd like that as well uh, Ismail Jazakallah khayna for coming on I'm really sorry for taking all your time and apologise to your family because I know it's been a long one and inshallah I really think we, there should have been two parts, part one and part two. So I might get you back on again just because there's anytime. certain things I want to kind of yeah, yeah. Yeah, speak to you about, inshallah. Just let me know. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam. Take care.